All right, very good. All right, hello, everyone. Um, I guess, like Scott said, tonight will be about 3D printing and using Blender to manipulate files that say you download off a Thingiverse or some other distribution platform. Um, usually those are made, those CAD models are made in other programs and then they have editable files and, you know, for those programs, but say you need to make an edit of your own, I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, you're going to import it. It's going to be a mesh, which is basically what Blender handles anyway. So mesh editing. And you're going to see that it comes in in a less desirable way where you're not able to um, easily select things and maybe make changes. So I'll start by uh, opening up a default scene in Blender here. And I'm going to delete all of this stuff. But, you know, before we do that, this is the file. I'll share it in, in the chat here. And it's uh, some 3D printable um, organizing, I guess, boxes or trays and things. And let's say that we wanted to change. I mean, this is probably pretty good as it is, right? But just for the, the sake of showing how you would edit it, if you wanted to, to widen it out or, you know, add a couple segments, we could do that. So if you go here and you want to follow along by downloading it, uh, you're more than welcome to. You just download all the files, and then you'll go to your um, your downloads, extract the zip, and you'll get this nice, long, lengthy uh, name for a folder. And then you'll jump into the files, and you'll get these STLs. Uh, here's a SketchUp Pro file, so that's kind of nice. Like, I guess. You know, since if people have SketchUp, they could go in and edit them there. But let's say for the sake of you not knowing how to use SketchUp or um, let's just say you don't know how to use SketchUp, we'll just go into Blender and do it. Uh, here are all the STLs. And when I go to Blender, if I delete all this stuff, you're going to notice that um, the grid by default is set up for meters and if let's say i bring in this uh this cube again this cube if you look in the end panel if you press n you're going to get some information about the dimensions of the object so by default this cube comes in you know two meters cubed here and you'll see that if i switch to orthographic view by clicking this button let's hide this and I hold Alt while I'm orbiting. You'll see that it does align to the grid. Okay. So this being a a one meter, you know, segment here on the grid where the the, the thicker lines exist, uh, we'll show you this. You know, this this two meter cube aligning with the grid, but we're going to work in millimeters because most um, 3D printers uh, and slicing software that sets up for the 3D print um, will use a millimeter unit scale. So we have to change this. So the way we're going to go about doing that is on the on the menu here, <coughs> you'll see scene properties with this cone sphere and then this vertex or point. You click that, and then you have a units tab. Now you can click in any of these menus. You can click it with your your left click, or if you hit A, it'll expand it. I don't know how what what A would stand for there, but it does expand this menu for you, and it's kind of nice because you could just hover over and keep pressing A. So hit A, the units come come down and you get some selection here. I'm going to widen this so you can see it better since I have a low resolution going. But if I go to uh, length, this is where we're going to change it from meters. By default, it is in metric. You can change it to imperial if you like working in inches. If you go to meters, set it to millimeters, 
you think we'd be done, but we're not. So what happens here is if I look at the end panel, I mean, we're getting 2,000 millimeter uh, cube here. And if you were to, to look at how the grid aligns, the grid's still aligning the same as it did before. But we know that most things you're going to print don't really fit on a print bed um, very large. I, I don't use a smaller scale 3D printer so much. I use one that has about 400 millimeters for the you know, squared for the, the print bed. So I I can print some larger things, but I, I definitely wouldn't be printing a 2,000 uh, you know millimeter cube or something on the on the print bed. So we have to change this. So the way we go about doing that is change the unit scale here. So you would set it to 0 0.001 and you hit enter. Now the grid changes here. And we kind of lost a little bit of the, the accuracy of, you know, other grid lines that you can snap to. You, you just have these major segments. And if you look here, you know, now we're a two millimeter cube. And you can only snap within just like, you know, one millimeter increments, which is fine. But it's advisable to go under this overlays uh, drop down and you will click the scale here. And, and set it the same, so 0 0.001. Okay, so now we're going to have a little bit more precision here to move uh, your object around, but also when you import something, you can make some more minor adjustments if you need. So that's the first step, and and by by default, this is not going to save uh, the. It's not going to save those unit settings in your scene by default every time you make a new file. So if I went to file new, sorry, if I went to file new and said general, you would you would lose those settings you just changed and have to do it again. If you want to maintain this this scene unit, you can go to file and you can go to uh, startup. It's going to be let's see. Under defaults, save startup file. And when you save this, it's going to make this your default startup file. So then you wouldn't have to go back and change the the units again. But I'm not going to do it. So let's delete that cube. I hit X and then brought up the prompt and I deleted it. Now, I, I already extracted my files here. So if I go to file and I go to import, and I go to STL, and then I go to my downloads, and I find that folder, go to files, you can bring in these, these files. You could do it individually. You can bring in one file at a time, or you could select multiple. The way you go through and select multiple is if you click um, one of the files in the list and you hold shift, it'll cascade and select multiples. But say you didn't want to select every one of these, but you wanted to select a few. If you hit Control and you click, you can select individual ones. And the last active one that you clicked, if you hold Shift and click, you cascade from that last active selection. So that's kind of how you navigate the, the file browser here. So we're going to just open the small one. And I'm just going to Shift click and, and grab all of these. and. I'm going to go to my my scale for the for the objects and what you're bringing them in. If you if you bring them in at this scale, you're not going to get the correct scale of the model being uh, in millimeters as the as the user who made them export exported them as. So just like before, we we set it to zero point zero zero one and I hit enter. And of course, it doesn't show you that there, but it's there. If you click it, you can see it displays it. And then you're going to click Scene Unit. And then this part is about, so most CAD modeling software, I believe it looks at it as um, Z is forward and Y being uh, up. So Blender does it differently, and so do a few other programs that I use. But this is maybe by default not what you want. In this instance, it's going to be fine. I think 
because it was made in SketchUp and it must use the same configuration. But if you ever come into an issue where when you import and the models are rotated in such a way that it doesn't make sense, then chances are you're going to change Z up to, to Y up. And then this will automatically switch to, I'll do it now. Change the up one first because this will automatically change. If you change this one, it kind of gives you a weird um, selection in here that, that doesn't make sense. But if you change the up direction and you say Y up, it'll give you Z forward. And if you go back here and you say Z up, see now it's giving me X forward. You'd have to set it to Y forward. And that's what we, what we want. So that's kind of boring, but I imported oh. So I imported them, and I don't see them. Well, since it comes in uh, selected, you can press home on your keyboard, and it will show uh, whatever is selected. It'll frame that into the center of your screen. So if you ever get lost, and let's, let's do that. Let's just get lost. Uh, I hit A twice, and I don't know. You can't you can't see the grid. You're rotating. You have no idea where it is. Okay, so then if you go into your your outliner here, this layers kind of thing, layers menu. Sorry, I'm a little tired from the the shoveling. <laughs> That's gonna be my excuse. Um, if I click one of these uh, objects that are in the layers here, and I hit home, it should bring you back. So this is kind of cluttered. You can come through and you can start turning off the other ones so that it makes it easier to manage what you're seeing in the scene. Or if you have the app. Oh, yes, sorry. Okay, are you using the third-party toolbox add-on? Oh, the 3D. Okay, so not yet. I am not. I can, I can load that up then, but I figured I'd just show it default in Blender without applying an add-on, which is a default add-on that comes packaged with Blender, but we'll go over some of that. Um, so it doesn't see any of the files. Mine is displaying at, okay, so let's do that again. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna delete all these, okay. So if you go to file and you go to import and you say STL, it should, by default, be looking for STLs. So I'm not sure if maybe you went to file open. Oh, that wouldn't do it. No. Let's see. File. You probably did go to import. But if you collect anything other than STL, it's going to filter for just that specific file type. So I'm going to wait for a response. I'm assuming everyone did follow along and click STL. Yeah, I got. I had. Um, I had gone to open because I had looked away from the screen for a second. Ah, uh, okay, no problem. Yep. So if you go to open, you're strictly looking for Blender-related files at that point. It's gonna just open like a dot .blend file, so it'll it'll sort for. Okay, I saw yeah. it, but now. Yep. Yeah, it's not displaying yeah. it on the screen. Okay. I, I you did something else, but I missed that. Okay. Well, no problem. So. If you go to File, Import, STL. Yep, and they're in the collection now. I can see them in the collection. Okay. So you went to, I'm going to go to my downloads. I'm going to double click this. And you're not seeing a list? No, I got, I got that. Oh, okay. I imported them, and I can see they're listed under the collection. Ah, uh, but you can't see them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's get back to that. All right. So I'm going to click these and my scene, this is all set for me already because I changed it. Okay. So mine are going to just show up because by default, um, they were imported pr previously and I had one selected as the active and I orbit around my active selection. So I didn't get lost in my viewport, but by default, when it comes in, it's, it's really looking for the origin this little um, orange dot. And, and that's one of the things, when you import files that people made in other programs, sometimes the origin is set somewhere different from where, maybe where you'd be expecting it on the object. They're offset in some way, so we're gonna change that. But 
given you cannot see what's what's um, what's been imported, when you first import it, it automatically has them all selected, which I think you were saying you saw in the in the outliner here for the collections and stuff. When you have them all selected, if you press home on your keyboard, it'll automatically frame the objects into your, your 3D viewport. Wait, and you, I'm sorry. Home okay. on the keyboard? What's home on the keyboard? Oh, wait, found it. Never wait, mind. Sorry. No, no, no problem. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, well, exactly. And and I, and I it used to be like, it used to be period. You could just press a period and it would do the same thing, but then they changed it to be this kind of menu. So now that you, you have to press home. But you can change all those hotkeys and then try it that way. One of the add-ons I use, it'll frame selections by pressing F. That's just a part of the, it changes the key map a little bit. So that's what I'm used to, but home is the default. All right, so now you should be seeing all your objects. Hey, yeah, I finally, I downloaded it to a different file. I couldn't find it, but thank you. All right, great. Did you, did you get yours open? Are you at this stage? Yes, I'm importing it now. Okay, great. All right, so. You know, if it, if it comes in where you can't see them at all, which is the likely behavior of it, just press home on your keyboard. It'll it'll frame the selection that's actively selected. And then you can rotate around them and manipulate your viewport easily. So what I'm going to do is, you know, I could click one of these and start editing it, but they all came in with different orientations and they're kind of overlapping. And it's a little bit messy to look at. So what you can do is you can come into your outliner and you can, if you click and drag, you can kind of just turn off a row of, of these, these layers. Or if you have them all turned on here and you just click one of these and then you press forward slash on your keyboard, it'll go into local mode and you can see it says user orthographic local mode. And now this is the only one you're seeing. If you press it again, it'll bring you back to this kind of global mode where you're, where you're seeing everything. So I'm going to press forward slash and we're going to have uh, one of these displayed. And if you try to, to rotate this, you can see how it's rotating around that orange dot. And that's the origin that it comes in with. And I hit escape to cancel that transformation but it's not very useful so you can move this i like using add-ons which i'm going to go over i think for a little bit tonight but especially a free one that makes things a lot easier but th this is default blender in which if you need to move this point it's a little difficult in certain ways may take more steps but if you go to options and you click this, you say uh, transform, and it says effect only, origins. And once you click that, when I press the G key to move, you see I'm just moving the origin. Now, it's kind of just floating around in space, and we're, we're moving in the Z, the X, and the Y axes. So this is troublesome, and it's not really what we want. So knowing that when it came in, it was it was aligned with um, losing where it is. That's okay. No, that's not okay. I'm going to hit escape. I'll, I'll move it again. But knowing that this is aligned on the floor, and so is if I alt orbit, you can see that this uh, this tray or this uh, this box is, no, this tray is, uh, is on the floor. So we want to kind of keep it there. So if I hit G and then I press Shift V, it'll restrict it from moving in Z and move it in X and Y, and that's what we want. So I'm just going to move it relatively to like this corner, knowing that this is where I want to snap it. And if I orbit and then I zoom in closer, you can see that the origin 
as a uh, coordinate given from it. it shows all the axes and the way it's pointing and this does matter so it's best not to rotate this it's kind of good to keep it aligned with your your global uh, world kind of orientation so just don't rotate it for now but it, that can be useful too but let's not let's not do that so if i hit g and i hit shift z i can get it close but nothing really doesn't really connect and you can kind of eyeball it but that's not accurate enough so what you can do is you can go into your snapping menu so this will toggle snapping on but you can do that by holding control so i'm just going to leave it off and then this menu here next to it is your snapping menu of, of what you would like to snap to so if i go to vertex by default it chooses the closest so the origin when it's moved whatever's whatever vertex is closest to is what it will snap to uh, th this is sometimes on a line rotation we don't really want to affect the rotation of this so it's best not to have that on your grid disappeared okay oh okay well that's not a problem so you change the unit scale here to 0 0.001 and you have it set to millimeters correct yes okay if you go to uh, this drop down here this is your overlays if you click this and you go to scale here ah. you're, you're going to set the same scale 0 0.001 and you should get your grid back Yeah, fingers yeah. crossed here. Okay, good. And then, I'm sorry, could you show yeah. Dan how to turn off the collections? Oh, sure, I, yeah. I missed that. Okay, no problem. I'm gonna... So this is fine. We'll get back to the origin. So right now I'm in a, in, a, in, a, in a view mode called local, and that's by pressing a forward slash. Okay. The other way to, to deal with uh, visibility is in collections if i click the eyeball and i i know this one's selected because it's highlighted in orange if i click the eyeball and i just drag down it's going to hide multiple See, when I, I i thought that was how you do it you click the eyeball uh but mm -hmm. it doesn't change anything on my screen okay so it's not hiding anything no hmm. okay so maybe let's see if i select all of these and i hit forward slash no, that still works. Forward slash zooms for me. Right, so forward slash will zoom, but it's it's basically framing okay. the active selected object. If you only had one object selected and you hit forward slash, it'll isolate that object. And it, it still shows that they're visible, but you dropped into a new kind of uh, 3D viewport in a way that just, it states right here that it's local. And then when you press that, it goes back to a global view of the objects in your scene. And this is just good for kind of working on an object without seeing all the clutter sometimes. But for you not being able to toggle uh, by pressing the eye, and, and you're, seeing, you're seeing the object still, right? You, you don't have the collection turned off here. Because even if you do that, so say these objects all exist within a collection. Right. And, I get, if I turn the collection yeah. off, it all goes away. Yeah. But for some reason, when I do the individuals, it doesn't do anything. That's interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a, a hackish kind of way to do it, but it shouldn't be that way. So you might be a just a an odd case that it's not doing it right. I I would like to be able to. To know how to fix that for you but i i know of a way that you can you can kind of change this so if you click on an object that you don't want to see and you go down to object properties this little orange square and then you go down to uh, visibility if you click under visibility and you say viewports it'll it'll hide it now this could be a problem because you can see how it didn't change visibility here. Let me go to filters, and I think this is the viewports one. Yeah. So 
don't see everything. Like That's it's grayed, it. it's grayed out under mm -hmm. collections now. The objects I did that too, but I still see them in the screen. So even clicking, so say you have one selected, and yeah. it's showing. So if you go to filter here as well, you can you can turn on more. Like this is selection. This is just uh, hiding Wait, it in the viewport. I don't have filter. Oh, Wait, it should. It no, no, it I just had here. to make it wider. Sorry. Okay, no problem. The other way you can say you uh, say you don't see something that's on my screen. If if you hold the middle mouse button. You see, you get these two arrows. Oh, it, there's no such thing for me. Okay. Well, <laughs> there's that's no all right. Mouse. There's yeah. no middle button. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. What? Well, mm, whatever it would be. Alter. There you go. Okay. That works in all menus, too. So if you do the, the two finger drag, you can kind of scroll instead of using like a mouse wheel or something. And I actually really like that. But. If you're ever not seeing something on my screen, try that first and see if you can slide it. A menu will slide back and forth and you can maybe find it. But uh, click the filter and you can turn on these multiple. So these four are the most common. And you know this would make it whether or not it's selectable in the viewport. If I click that and then I try clicking, I can't click it anymore. Or you know this should work for you, but it's not. This is um, the same thing. The same thing essentially is doing this, but it's just not. It's not setting it in the object data. It's it's actually just tied to this outliner here. So this is kind of more like a a permanent way to to change whether it's selectable or change the viewport. And if you ever run into an issue where you can't select something and it shows that there's an arrow here, if I turn that off, oh, it actually did toggle there. So never mind. Maybe I'm making things up, but this is where you would be able to do that as well. And I, I guess it's just not, it's not doing it for you. So let's do it in this. Yeah, let's let's do it in this way. Let's just say, you know, it. I was I was gonna say yeah. check to make sure that you didn't duplicate your collection. That's a like oh. if you scroll down your collection area, if you see more than one collection, you may have duplicated it. So anything that you do isn't going to translate. Right. Now, there's just one collection. And actually, why do my boxes look different when they have the same name? Apparently, my computer just doesn't want to cooperate today. It's You're saying my they... Images, my images look different, too. Like, they're taller boxes with dividers. Oh, mm. You might have been, I imported, uh, I went to import STL. Yeah. I, cho I chose the small, oh, the small yeah. set. Now I have okay. two folders to choose from. One was images and one was, hold on. Files. One was files. Is yeah. there a difference between? No. All the files should just be in here. These are the ones I chose. But. Yeah, I got the same exact name. I, I don't know what's going on. Okay, well, that was. That was a good call, whoever chimed in there, because, yeah, absolutely. If you if you have multiple objects, uh, they, like uh, like they were saying, if you let's let's duplicate one. Oh, cool. I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna do it a couple times because I don't really. I mean, there's also if you go to undo, uh, you can bring up. Uh, oh, I don't know how to bring up the list. Which one's yours? Which one's yours? All right, so here it is. It puts a zero zero one here, so I'm I'm just going to delete this by hitting X. Anyway, so I'm still in uh, effect only origin, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to make a duplicate of this by hitting Shift D, and I'm going to right click, and it's going to put it in the same exact position as the other one. Now we have two of the same, and you can see that it looks, you know, essentially like. There's only one there, and if I were to turn the toggle this on and off, you're seeing the, the object not disappearing. But if I toggle both, it would. But it sounds like that's not your issue, so. Yeah, Scott's uh, actually yeah. at my computer now. He's helping me. Okay. Well, then, in this instance, let's uh, let's say we started affecting the origin of this. If you were to just brute force it, you know, and I selected all of these, just hit G. 
while you're in uh, like a top-down view, I, I'm snapped into the top orthographic view. You could orbit and hold Alt and kind of snap in, and you'll see at the top left here, it'll notify you're in the top orthographic. That means that when I hit G, it's only going to move an X and Y, and just move them away. And then you have you have one to to work with. So so that should be. And I don't need all this because, man, my my resolution. So there we go. And, and you know, I don't even really worry about the selection. Okay, so let's. Um, I can go over this again if if you're not caught up yet. But the the origin. We, we go to options up here at the top right of the the three D viewport, and you're gonna say affect only origins. And now, even though you have this object selected, when you hit G, you're only moving the origin. And remember, if you hit Shift Z, you're restricting it from moving in Z, so you're moving X and Y only. And you get it kind of close there. Um, we want to snap it to this vertex that exists in this corner. So if you go in the snapping menu, you go to vertex, this will set it to snap to the closest vertex and this says affect move rotation scale if you're rotating something or scaling something it should be able to snap to vert vertex or vertices but we're only really wanting to move it into uh, a position where you're snapping with a vertex so by default it's set to move and if i press uh, g and i hit shift z again i'm moving it and if i hold control it'll snap to that vertex. So if I click, uh, left click, it'll accept that transformation and it'll place it right there. And then if I go to options and I turn off effect on the origins, now if I were to rotate this and I, I hit R and then hit Z only to rotate on Z, you can see I'm rotating around that origin. That makes things much much nicer for us here. Uh, the reason I moved this origin also is because it was offset from um, our world coordinates of 0, 0, 0 here in XYZ. And I kind of want to get it there, but I want to accurately move it to the center. And I thought, let's put it to this corner, and that's what's moved to that location. So there's a menu. Are we in a good state to keep moving, or did you? Were you able to resolve your issue? Oh no, it's no, like a it's still... hot mess. But keep keep going. Okay, I'm sorry I'll about that. I'll watch the video afterwards. Is that all right? Uh, I'll watch the video afterwards. So, well, it's good that people run into these issues, and maybe we can learn something different because there might be a solution that we can figure out. But in this instance, I don't. Oh, that is bizarre. Oh, well, I mean, we can switch to the medium boxes because it won't make a difference. Okay. It's box. Yeah. All right. Well, all this should apply to the same same thing. So the same edit. So sure. Mm -hmm. To snap for snapping or. Yep. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, my origin isn't showing up. Like, I don't have the dot or anything. It's not showing you the origin. So there might be a reason in overlay here. It might not be what's wrong here, but there is the show origins. Yeah. Under, if that's already, if that's highlighted, which should be mm -hmm. by default, uh, it is? Yes. But you're not seeing it. You know. Okay, so your origin may be up here. It's not in the center of the world. Well, that is what's on your screen is on my screen, but I'm talking about the orange dot. So that right. origin that you put on the corner. Sure. This little orange dot here by default came in. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm hitting F1. Sorry, that's my uh, by default. I, I use F1 for undo. Let's just go back. I have 64 undos, which 
might be helpful that we said it like that for you. But I think we're done. <laughs> but anyway, by default, the origins all should have came in here with these objects. So if you don't have anything selected, like if you don't have, uh, let's make sure, okay. If you don't have an object selected, it won't show the origin. Well, it is, it's showing something selected. here. You do, and it's not showing, it's yeah. not showing in the center. No. Mm. Oh boy. We're running into a lot of, a lot of issues here with this, but I only think why that could be. Uh, like I said, it under overlays, this could have been a reason, but hmm. Uh, you know what? We didn't get that far with this anyway, so let's just, uh, I can do this pretty quick. I'm going to run through fast, and I'm going to go, I delete everything. I'm going to go to File, Import, STL. I'm going to click and shift click, just like these four. Make sure my scale is set to 0 0.001 here, um, aligning with how we changed the scene unit initially in that menu under scene properties to 0 0.001. And then I went to grid and I changed the scale of the grid to 0 0.001. I did it here with the scale for when I was importing. I went to scene unit. By default, it's Y forward, Z up. That's fine. And then I imported. Now, everything comes in. The origin should be here in the center. If you, let's say I, I go to local mode by pressing forward slash, I can see that my origin's still here. So I don't know if, if that maybe helped, but if you're not seeing your origin yet, uh, that's problematic because that, that kind of that puts a stop to what you know what we're doing here because you need to affect the origin okay. origins I, I, yeah i just started over to redo it i've had to take blender off and re-download it a few times because i feel like i'm not sure if that's an issue well so you know sometimes it depends so they do have the they have different releases that we consider stable and experimental i do tend to stick with experimental releases and i don't have that many problems uh, I do run into an issue sometimes where it will crash, but as long as you save often, it doesn't really, you know, get in the way. Or if autosave is set, you can always kind of recover your last session and hope that it was pretty close. I think the intervals are set to two minutes, so you maybe lost two minutes of work. Um, but yeah, Blender it tends to do that. They're constantly developing it, and and it it that can be an issue. So if if you are ever so concerned about that and you're not using any of the newer tools or don't care about that and you just want some basic functionality that Blender gives, then you might want to use the, the stable release. And I think that's at, um, I think this, this Blender 2.912 is a stable release, but here's a long-term one. So long-term is uh, 2.83 LTS. Gotcha. And the, this is their kind of like, if you're working in an industry that you have to make sure that things are stable, they call this stable, but this is the truly stable version. And and most likely what we're doing here, you could do all of that in 2.83. So, you know, if you don't want to keep installing these, just download this one and you should be hopefully good to go. Maybe we wouldn't run into these issues so much, but that's just the, the nature of this is that it's an open source software that they've, they're really developing it fast and things kind of break sometimes, but they're constantly bug fixing it too. So, I mean, I think it's, it's nice, but I, I live on the edge and I go with the experimental builds, but thank you. You're welcome. So I got the origin back and I reset the grid. Okay. Uh, but it doesn't seem correct all the way. Cause I can't zoom in. Okay. Yeah. So, that's that's an issue when you first load it in. Uh, when you first import these objects, it's kind of I think it kind of centers it to here, and depending on how you have your uh, your input or sorry your navigation set up, like I have it set to orbit around selection. I don't have perspective on. I turn that auto perspective off. 
I zoom to my mouse position, so where my cursor is, and then I am invert these because it makes more sense to me, but that that's just more personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, but by default, when I'm rotating, like really, it it's not it's rotating around this object for me now because I made it the active one. But for you, let's just click all of these uh, these objects in the collection here. If I click this and I hold shift, I can select all of them or just one, either way. If you press uh, home on the keyboard, it should center your view to, to the objects. You should be able to see them now. Is that correct? Um, I, th I think I need to change. I don't know if I need to change the metric scale. I'm trying to find that. Option oh, again. Oh, oh, let's do that. All right. So, so under uh, scene properties, so all of, um, these tabs here that are kind of clustered together are kind of relate to your scene and the world uh, information and render settings and all that kind of stuff. The one with the cone, the sphere, and the, the vertex or point, if you go to units and, and drop that down, go to length, set it to millimeters. If you go to the unit scale, set it to 0 0.001. And then, then if you go to uh, overlays under scale in the grid, you would set 0 0.001 and it should give you this representation here. Now, again, th this is something that ha when you change it and you saw that when you restarted Blender, it didn't preserve that change. And if you went and you saved a default, if you went to file default, save startup file, it would do that. But that might not be what you want. You might not use it for this all the time anyway. So um, th the nice thing is that Yes, this is about 3D printing and importing something and editing it, but this is a very important aspect of Blender. And I think by default it works, but it, it's a little convoluted and there are add-ons that make this a little bit more user-friendly and I like that I will show, but we got to do it this way because it makes sense to to know this. If we were to install that add-on like machine tools or something, and there's a lot of setup involved in that too. And you'd have to go through the menu and choose the things that you wanted to be active within that plugin and that's a lot but i'm going to go over that because quality of life thing and i like it it might be a little much but you fix your problems it's awesome i am curious to hear about this we should talk about it but if everybody's at the same stage here now let's just move on and get this origin in place so if everybody has their grid set and their objects imported. And then we go to options and it, say I had it selected and I went into local view by forward slash. If we have this showing and I go to options and I say effect only origins. Now when I move or, you know, I can even use this gizmo. And I, I click the, the blue square here and it won't move it in the Z axis. It'll just move X, Y. You can do it this way too. Um, I tend to like the hotkeys, so I'm going to hit G and I'm going to hit shift Z and I'm going to move it. We get somewhere near there. That's fine. I'm going to rotate, orbit my view, move my cursor close to this, hold control, middle mouse to get even closer. And then you can turn snapping on, which will automatically snap by default, but I tend to like toggling it by hitting control it's not showing it here because we're not doing anything that would activate it but if you hit this this is nice because then you don't end up leaving snapping on um, if you go to the menu next to it and then you choose vertex by default it's increment but if you choose vertex and then uh, snap with closest whatever this we're affecting the origin here only so whatever this thing that is being transformed is closest to it'll snap to it and we're looking for a vertex so that point and we're affecting move only so if i hit and don't rotate rotate this because it's a little hard to get back into um to fix that I, I think maybe we can reset it here but uh let's just keep moving so if i hit g uh shift z and i have my um snapping set up to be vertex and i hold control when I get close to it, it gives you this nice little circle there. 
showing that you're snapping, and of course you can feel that it sticks. And then left click, it'll confirm that transformation. And now our origin is set. We don't want to affect the origin only at this point, so we're going to turn it off and I'm going to zoom out. So if if that worked, um, very good. <laughs> I'm going to keep moving. If it hasn't, just tell me and we can maybe help solve it. But uh, if I press G and um, Z or Shift Z, I mean, here, I can start moving it around. And it is going to be moving from this origin point. That's what it's looking for is its like point of snapping and rotation, all that stuff. So there is a menu that relates to this 3D cursor. And your 3D cursor by default is here at 000. Okay. If I want to, I can snap this to that cursor. So if I press Shift S, you get a pie menu. And it'll say, you know, selection, which is denoted by, well, the text, of course, but then, you know, you see the little arrow, or sorry, the cursor. And then, uh, which is kind of confusing because I say cursor, but then the cursor, the 3D cursor, has the, the circle with the, the kind of 45s through them. Uh, so, what we're looking for here is selection to cursor. So that's the top one. That's pretty common to want to do that. And it's going to move the selection to the cursor, but it's going to move it based on where that origin is. And if you didn't have, when we first came in, if I did that, it would just stay in place because the the origin was set by default at the 3D cursor at 000, and it wouldn't move. So that's why we had to change that. So now if you're snapped here to the center um, and you you want to rotate this, I kind of I like to keep so let's say I'm in this view. I personally like X positive to be this direction for me and Y positive to be um, this direction and then of course Z. So this orientation I guess is fine. We're just gonna go with it. But if you want to rotate it, the the difference here then, if I keep it like this, is that the this is y negative. So if you're typing values or doing anything um, where you need to manage the value itself, you'd be going in a negative direction. So maybe I'm just going to rotate it and hit uh, z, and it's going to restrict it to rotating in z only. And I'm going to type in 90. And it did what we wanted. It went to a positive direction. So it went, you know, 90, 90 degrees in a positive direction. If you press minus on your keyboard, it'll toggle between a minus direction or, you know, a negative direction or positive. So we're good. Uh, you could hit enter or you could uh, press left click or you, I think you could press space as well. So, so now we have it rotated in. in the orientation we'd like, and we're only going to work on this one box here. So the way we're going to make changes to the mesh itself is you have to go into edit mode, and we, we did that with the, the glasses and the mug. So if I if I hit tab, it'll jump into edit mode. Uh, in this mode, you're going to see that you know it shows you your, your vertices, the points. You're going to see the edges, and you're going to see faces, and you're going to see that it's triangulated, and this is common for uh, any mesh coming out of a CAD software. Uh, th they like to keep it in triangles. It usually resolves like shading issues or, or other things relating to that. Uh, and, it, and it doesn't have end gons which, which most people say um, are a no-no. But there is a new camp that believes, and it's been for a while, that you know end gons are fine as long as you know how to manage around them. So that's that's a whole other thing, but but with these um, triangulations, you, you got to make like if we went into face mode and I press three, um, you got to make more selections to you know to get what you want. Say say you only wanted this, like we we know that. I'm oh, sorry. If I click this and I hold Control and I click this, it'll select in this path. But say we know we want to. To move this face itself, you know this collection of faces. But in the object itself, it's that's just like a planar surface that 
that's all we wanted to move. Well, we had to select all of that. So some objects can get pretty complicated quickly, and this is not, but uh, this is how you would have to make the selections. And of course, we can press G and then Y or something and move it. You can type in a value or something, which is way too much. But we can type in a value and we'll move it. But that's not that's not what we want. So the first thing we do when we bring in an object like this is you would go to uh, you would select everything by hitting A. Uh, I'm in face mode currently, but if you press X, you have something called limited dissolve. Okay, so it's going to dissolve certain components of this, like the edges that kind of make up surfaces that are you know, it doesn't really describe anything new. You know, you're not really changing the form or shape of something. It's just there because, you know, a program exported it to probably for shading reasons um, to be viewed. But if you click limited dissolve, you're going to see it kind of cleans that up for you. And it's based on um, if you click on this arrow or you press F9, you get this little floating menu. It's based on this maximum angle. So you, you can change this, and that that'll affect more or less. You know, that's going to destroy it. You know, it really starts destroying it at some point. Um, pretty much just going, I think, back to zero is is where it's. You know, so if, if you want to start out at zero and then just like just slowly scroll while holding shift, you can watch how uh, it dissolves different parts of this. So you get a better idea of what's happening, but but this is a pretty simple model in that you know it's it's probably got like just like 45s and you know 90 degree um, like angles in it, so it's not really it's pretty simple. But that's how you would go about dissolving. Right, I'm going to set it back to the default, which is the five degrees. Right, we don't have to worry about any of this. This is a fine uh, limit here. By default, sets to normal, and again, normals are are basically an invisible, uh, invisible thing that. Let's see, where can I? I thought I could show. Yeah, it's down here. I got scroll. Where am I? Here we go. Normals. I guess that's not. Yeah. So now I'm just gonna mess up and. So like this should this should all be, I guess it's the size because of changing. So that's the thing, you change the unit scale in Blender, and we're doing it for the 3D printing purposes. Um, because Blender's by default is set to meters or Blender units, you can set it to that. Uh, you know, so certain things are affected by the scale change. So in this instance, it was the normals, but a normal is, you know, a line kind of denoting that. This is kind of like its viewing angle. It's the way that it determines like shading this object and stuff. So that that's what it was looking at, and then it was checking that against you know the the degree that you had set. So I'm gonna get rid of this. So if you scroll down, you can turn it off. Anyway, so now you have this pretty clean object. That's great. So one of the things we can do here now is you know when I click a face, like we grab that whole you know that whole edge here, which is great because before you would have been zooming in, pulling your hair out, clicking, you know, zoom back out, maybe holding control, clicking, you know, moving down here, control clicking just to kind of follow the path that you're selecting just to get that. But now we have it. So um, that's all well and good. And now we don't really know much about this object in terms of its size, but because we set it to millimeters and when we imported, we adhered to those scaling changes. If you press N, well, not in object mode, so hit tab to get out. If you press N, you're going to see that this object is, you know, 114 meters or millimeters in Y, which I don't think looks correct. And that and that's because uh, we applied rotation to this. So you can see in Z we moved it 90 degrees. So uh, by default, when it came in in Y it was, you know, the Y direction of it, this is, sorry, let's see. 
I think it's it's reading um, it's local. So an object has a local um, a local transformation. Let me see if not see that didn't change it, did it? Yeah. So what it's reading here is it's reading object information that relates to its local information, not the global. So I, I think that's why it's telling you in Y it's 114. We could tell that's the longest dimension. This is why that doesn't make sense. So you know, once we made this rotation here, what we can do is you hit control A and control A brings up that apply menu. If you hit rotation, it'll change that and basically zero out all the um well just rotation in this instance and then when you look at it you can see that in x it's reading as 114 millimeters which is this so great so we know we're in at the right scale we know this thing is 114 millimeters um but you know how how do we know you know what this um this wall is here for this this kind of edge or lip well you can take the measuring tool over here in um, and you can hold control and it'll snap now, I'm not clicking anything here and I can now click and continue to hold click down left click and then hold control and it'll snap and it's telling me it's 4.999994 millimeters and let's just say that SketchUp Pro isn't as accurate as Blender that's what we're going to say but you can and that's fine. I mean, hell, for uh, 3D printing, you would, that's not really much of a deviation at all. So that's, that's completely fine. But, you know, we want to move this a certain amount. We know it's, let's say it's just five. Um, if we went back to, uh, let's say you want to delete this too, by the way. Uh, once you're in uh, this tool for measure uh, and you draw out a dimension, if you hit X, it'll just delete it. If you were to click, you know, hold control, click and snap it, and then I don't know, do another one, right? And you hit X, it's going to delete that previous one. But if I hit X again, it's going to say, do you want to delete? And really what it's asking is you want to delete this object. So no longer has it looked for this measurement. It's actually just looking to delete this. And if you want to remove this from uh, your screen, and delete it you can um, you can click it again and start adjusting it to add an angle which is another feature of it and once you did that it becomes active again just hit X it'll delete the angle hit X again it'll delete it that's a little convoluted way there there are ways to just I think change visibility for that I don't remember exactly where it is but you can somewhere change and just turn that off but anyway so we know this is five millimeters um, I'm going to go back to selection, which was if you press W, it would just go back. And I will hit tab and I'll go in here and I'm going to, I'm, I'm in face mode currently. So it's one, two, three. So one vertex, two edge, three face. I'm in face. I click this and now I know, hey, I want to move this exactly, you know, two more millimeters in Z. So if I press G and I say Z and I start moving, I can just press two and we added two more millimeters. Now that's that that would be effectively how we're going to be manipulating this to make it um, you know change its dimensions for our needs. Uh, if you like a more interactive, oops sorry, if you like a more interactive way of of seeing that, there is a way. So I'm going to do that now. It's an add-on. And this add-on is by default a Blender thing. It's It comes default in the Blender download. And if you go to Edit, Preferences, and you go to Add-ons, and then you look up uh, in, in the search field here, if you type Measure, I'll start to. Uh, and be lazy and not type at all, but there's something called measure it. And if I click this and make it active, and I go to this and make sure it's auto saving or save preferences, when you press N, it brings up this panel, and you don't see it, okay? But it hides itself here 
under view. And now I have to scroll because because of my resolution here. You might not, but at the bottom here, you're going to see something called measure, measure it tools. Okay. So here's the options for this. This um, You can configure a lot about this. I use this a lot uh, for my work. And what you can do is, um, by default, it has this little ghost here. Uh, and it's telling you that it's going to display measurements for all objects in your scene. Doesn't matter if they're selected or not, it's just going to show them. So we're just going to want to see them on selected objects for now. And we're only really working with one anyway here at the moment. So I just click the ghost, turn it off. And then this is the toggle for it to even show measurements. Ever. So click show, and now this is set. Um, <clears throat> the way this works is it's going to say about adding a measure, right? And by default, you know, nothing is selected other than this object. So it's looking for, you know, specific types of selections. So I'm going to hit tab. I'm going to go on this mode and I'm going to hit A twice and just deselect everything. And I'm going to click, you know, let's click this edge here. Oh, I've got to be in edge mode, huh? So two, click this edge. And now you can see segment. Well, all of this is um, now active, but if you click segment, it's going to give you a measurement and hurrah it is set in meters thank you so if you scroll down you go to units you can set it to millimeters and now you can see it says seven millimeters and it was previously five four point nine 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 and you can change the precision here so i can just keep turning this and there we go now we see that the imprecision that it had but now you can you can view more precision by you know either clicking and sliding this or you know leave it at like two or something i don't know it's fine i mean for millimeters geez uh, that seems good um all right so that's how we can to bring up a measurement if you don't like how it's displaying in this color uh, there are these overrides or you can click um, you can click it here and, and change it. And now I have uh, a different color, which is easier to see. Now, there's a lot of different settings. Once you click this gear, you can turn this on and off to see it. And that's independent of, you know, it's showing or hiding things or even you know, telling. It's just, it's another part of it that, you know, if you don't need to see that dimension anymore, um, in here you're going to get a bunch of different options. F relates to the font text size, so by default it's 14. It's fine for now. And then uh, this is saying the distance that uh, it's drawing that dimension. Now it's saying in 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 uh, sorry in Z, you know, which isn't really what we want. I'm going to undo that. Oh, it's not going to let me undo it. It's actually what was that set to? Eh, I'm just say zero. Because it doesn't really matter here. We're not looking to give a dimension drawing. We're just trying to see this. So you could leave it at the defaults and just go. Right. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to change the color. Go. Uh, if you hit N, you can hide all that. And now you can see that it's you know reading seven millimeters. If I go to face mode and I click on this again and I start pressing G and Z, you know you can see it actively updates the dimensions for you. So that's kind of nice. And then you knew you were at seven, so let's make it uh, nine. So let's add two more millimeters. It, it uh, snapped into that movement. You press enter to confirm it. And now you know this edge is nine millimeters. And that's how you go about you know, calling out different dimensions, um, selecting things, and having a nice, nice way to visually see what that has changed to. You don't have to use that. You can just know by you know, when you're transforming that you're adding two millimeters there, but you can easily lose track. And you can always just come in here and take a measure, you know, just see it. So that might be good enough. Hit X. But I tend, I have to put dimensions on all these things for drawings that we send places. So this is, you know, I use it. And there's a lot to how you set up um, how far this is offset from here, 
where the text is, how big, whatever orientation it's in. It, it, it can be a little convoluted, but we're not, we don't have to go over that unless people want it then. Um, but that's essentially how we're making these changes. <clears throat> so, you know, same goes thing for everything else here. I, you know, if you took this object and you're like, well, you know, I want to make it, I want to make it wider uh, overall. And, and you decided, well, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to select everything and I'm just going to make this wider and I hit S and then Y. You're going to scale, but you're going to scale everything. And you're going to lose your, your wall thickness. This is going to be different. That's not what you wanted. So let's undo that. The way you would handle this is, um, you know, we, we could, let's plot out a dimension. So just because I like to see it. So I'm going to go vertex. Uh, I'm going to select this vertex. I'm going to hold shift and select this vertex. I'm going to press N and bring up my measurement uh, panel here. I'm going to go back up to add measures and I'm going to hit segment. And remember I said there's something called override. You could by default, you know, come in here and then start setting your color. But uh, there is an override setting, which by default actually chooses red as override. And if you have that active, it's going to override with any of these parameters here. That you set so every time you add one it'll just be set to what this override is so very good i'm going to hit n and we see it's 83 point uh you know four millimeters so you know let's say we wanted it to be i don't know square because this is 112 right and we know that we're taking the measure from you know the absolute extent of the outside of this surface and this one so we know that that's you know an accurate reading of you know the overall uh, dimension of this thing in Y. So this is where instead of scaling, you would just select vertices or you know and move those. And you, you if you went to edge mode, you could do a similar thing. And oh, <laughs> we're in measure, so hit X, hit W to go back to your selection. Make a selection, right? If you select over the center of a series of edges, it should select it, but I guess maybe you just want to encapsulate it. See, then we're grabbing ones that we didn't want. So I, I was pretty certain that if you if you go over the center, it should select these, but it made a liar out of me. Or I just don't know better. Um, but you saw that also, as before, when we were doing some mesh editing, that when you made that selection, you're only selecting what was kind of visible, right? You know, everything that is not visible is being, you know, it's occluded and it's going to be removed from being able to select. So the way you handle that is uh, if you press Z and you go to uh, wireframe mode. Once I make a selection, now it's going to select all the way through it, right? And you know what? It doesn't let me select these series of edges. You could add them by you know, individually holding shift and clicking them if you needed to, or maybe, you know, it might even relate to some CAD softwares and mesh editing softwares. Um, they, they have, if you, if you click from like left and you scroll down to the right and make a selection, it has a different behavior. If you click from uh, right and scroll down to the left, it has a different behavior. So that might be the case here. So let's just test it. No. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to go through it, but really what we, we don't want to do this because if I start moving um, with edges selected, if I were to hit G, Y, and start moving it, you can see that it's, you know, an edge is made up of those two points, those two uh, vertices. So, I mean, by selecting the edge, you're, you're selecting those at the same time, and that can be useful. But in this instance, it's not. So uh, I'm going to hit Control Z. I'm going to make sure that I go to vertex selection. It it basically gave me the vertices that were selected when the edges had been selected, and I'm I'm going to want to remove by holding Control and dragging and getting rid of those. So really, we only want to move these. If I hit G Y and start moving it, 
<clears throat> you can see you're preserving your wall thickness. You're adding more, um, you know, more of a width here. You know, it says 83.4, so we'd have to do a little math. I guess it's 112. So, you know, I think if let's bring up the end panel. If I bring up the end panel and I go to uh, item and transform, let's let's see global. So we're going to see some difference here. I'm not sure how this is going to be affected entirely with this, but so in Y, if I um, want to move this in a positive direction, and I know it's 83.4, let's just try this. So if I click here and I say um, plus, hold shift, press plus, and then I say, mm, let's see, this is not good. I'm not good with math, guys, so um, I think you, yeah, that's not going to work. Hmm. So you can you can do addition in here if I just like, but you'd have to know what your animation is about. So that doesn't really help, does it? Um, the other way we're going to do this is uh, <laughs> we're going to do it the way I would, I guess. I hit G Y, and I'm just going to start getting it close. And if you hold Shift, you're going to change that precision, and and you're getting close, right? So it won't quite get there, but the closer you get in, and then while you're scaling, or sorry, we're not scaling, but while I'm moving GY, and depending on where your cursor was when it was, you know, when you activated the, the transform, if you hold shift and you start scrolling, you can see that you're getting more precision there. If you just did the math, you know, 83.4, you know, you want to be as accurate as possible and you can do that in your head real fast. Just do it. But I made a fool of myself and, and, and now you know my dirty secret of not knowing <laughs> math very well. As a matter of fact, I drew on the desk in school all the time or in my notebook while I should have been learning math. And my sister became a math teacher. So, yeah. Jeez. Mm. So very good. So, that, you know, you can check the precision on that if you hit the end um, and key again, hit view, scroll down. Um, where is it? Precision. Start turning it up. And you can see I didn't get it quite right. If you wanted to be finicky about it and you hit GY and hold shift, you can see it's going to be kind of hard. I think you'd have to really zoom in and i think so what would happen is you don't really want to zoom in here because if i hit gy and hold shift oh well look at that maybe it's just dependent on how closely zoomed in you are but that's way closer so you know just do the math and get it right and you know type in the value and you'll get exactly what you need if you're just kind of winging it and you just want to move it around and and hold shift to kind of get more precision with your movement you can do that too and there you go so now we have something that's, you know, square, a square tray. And, and you can just keep doing those edits uh, all around. And like I said, uh, moving uh, vertices are kind of, uh, if you want to get, sorry, if you want to get out of this mode and hit Z, you can go back to solid shaded mode to see it after you made your selection or something. You know. Or if you go up to the top here and you click, um, this is wireframe. You can set it to that, but if you're in shaded mode, and I think if you hit Alt Z, yeah, Alt Z is your hotkey for X-ray mode, and X-ray mode is still gonna kind of shade the faces of everything, but it's gonna allow you to select through objects just like Wireframe would. So you could leave it in this while you're editing if you like that. Or you can toggle it off. And I made this selection, and I knew that you know I wanted to you know, make this wall taller. I wanted to move this whole like lip up. So same thing, just, you know, start moving it. Now you're going to have this, this issue potentially, right? Maybe you didn't want that to move with it. So let's control Z undo that. So a way you can go about that is you could add, um, you could add vertices here and slide them up to where this is and you'll have kind of like a double vertice situation 
and then when you move them, you'll you'll have more. Or you can uh, you could have this selected. You can hit E um, and extrude, but see, it's actually extruding along a normal here. And if it's doing that, and you hit uh, Z and then Z again, it'll go uh, in a global global move, and you can kind of add this whole series of faces just as you did before. And and that would respect uh, in the same way. So I'm going to do it again. So I say E. And once to move along the normals of everything, uh, you can change that, which we'll go over. But if I hit Z, if it ever does that, if you hit Z once and again, or any other letter or key relating to the, the axes you want to move in, um, it'll restrict it to the global uh, world kind of axis. And then while I'm doing this, I could type, I don't know, another 10 millimeters. And it knew that from this point to here, it was 10 millimeters. And we got, we, we moved the, the wall up. So that, that's basically how you begin to edit that stuff. And now you learned how to edit your three files that you downloaded, learn how to dissolve all that extra uh, geometry to, you know, make it harder to manipulate things. Uh, this is not the most um, like comprehensive thing here, I guess, but you know, you can start making edits where if you click a face and you hit E to extrude, you know, it wants to extrude along the normal. If you have multiple selections, it kind of averages that. So, you know, because it's coming from the normal of this face, and you know, um, that's aligned 90 degrees to the world. Like, like this object's not rotated in any way, it'll, it's aligning with, you know, what you expected. You're just kind of moving it out. So I was able to, uh, you know, extrude some extra geometry there and you can make edits. You know, you can go to this mode. I guess we're, we're adding, let's, we're adding a handle. Let's do that. I don't know. So I'm going to click this because I already extruded it and I'm going to hit G Y and remove it some more. And, you know, I could always come in here, set a measure, and, and do it more accurately. Uh, or we could just start modeling in the shape. And when we model the shape in, you know, maybe later we're going to go and decide to, 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 to make it more accurate. We could add the measures later, just kind of get the shape in them. So, so I'm going to make this into a handle. And... If I go to um, these faces, let's see if we can take two at, at the same time. And I think if I press I to inset, you know, I can start adding this geometry. I could, you know, delete these faces by clicking both of them and hitting X and then delete the faces. And then we could come in here, you know, go to two edge mode, click it. The first one, the next one being active, hit F, it'll fill it. You know, come in, kind of do this all the way through. And then if you want to add a bevel, you can click this edge, click this edge. And then hit Control B, and start beveling. Now, it's going to it didn't respect these edges because we didn't select them. So I'm guessing in this instance, you kind of remember about selecting uh, edge loops. If you hold alt and you click an edge, it'll select that whole edge loop. And you hold alt and select that edge, you'll select the whole edge loop. Well, well, in this instance, we want to get both. So hold shift, hold control, and then, ooh, nope. So I'm not good with this. This is default blender for me. So hold shift, I'm sorry. Hold Alt, hold Alt and Shift, and you can add um, loop selections. And then if you hit Control B, and you start beveling, you start beveling out that. Now, you can see how it's changing um, the width here in such a way. Maybe, maybe you wanted it to be the same thickness through. I believe that within the bevel settings, you could change the width type. And this should give you some different behaviors. But 
what I what I normally just do because I truly do not know enough about how that works is I would just make I would put a measure here and I would see what it's doing and then as I um, had showed before you know I would you know I would probably set my I would change my selection so like I would go to vertex mode you know I would select multiple and then I'd make this active and then I'd deal with that whole um, changing uh, within this this menu you know active element and I would start scaling it and then you'd have to do that for all the edges to kind of align them uh, I use again like I said plugins to kind of do this so I'm gonna go over uh, some of that but you know, for this, like for this instance here. Okay, there is another tool. I'm going to show you one that's built in. And this is kind of more or less if you're building an object, I would say. Like if I built it from a drawing, I would do this a lot. Um, so what we're going to do here is we, we put this bevel in and we like, we like this aspect of the bevel, right? We when we were doing the bevel, we knew we wanted it to be this wide. You could type in a value and get an accurate representation here, but your thickness of the wall is going to change. So what I would do is I'd go and I'd delete this, delete that face, and then I would I would take this um, this edge here, and there's a in preferences. Under add-ons, there's something called Tiny CAD, and this is default in Blender. Click this, and then I would save the preferences. Okay, um, and then I would <clears throat> I would be able to use some of the Tiny CAD tools. So uh, one of the ways that this would work is if I hit uh, right-click, you can see Tiny CAD add itself to the right-click menu, and it's going to give you a couple. Um, tools here that, that deal with intersections and other things. So wh what I would do is I would just take like this vertex. Uh, I'm not good with, again, I'm having trouble with my hotkeys. But if I take this and I maybe extruded it out and I knew that I was moving in the Y axis, I'd just, you know, draw it out to here. And then I would take this and I would draw, I would hit E and I'd draw this and the X. And this would take some cleanup here because what you're doing here is you, you're, you're kind of rebuilding, rebuilding this, this geometry. Now we know that this is not, um, not the width we want. So I'm trying to think exactly how I would would resolve that you know i don't i don't think i know <laughs> to be honest i should have been th there are like some when you do bevels again there is an option as you're beveling to set whether or not it's using like an offset method or width or a percentage and you should be able to type in a certain value but i don't think it will respect this um so sometimes in that instance it's better to just draw uh the shape and the way I do the drawing is I'm just essentially grabbing um, vertices, extruding, and then where these vertices, I'm sorry, where these uh, edges intersect, if you go into the tiny CAD and you say all, so intersect selected edges, or you add a vertex here, if you say intersect uh, selected edges, the ones that you have selected, they should be split. Yeah. Well, let's do this. Let's do a, uh, vertex at intersection. So what it's going to do is it's going to add a vertex here, right? And it's not connected in any way. So in this instance, you would you would click these two, make this your active selection, hit M, and you would um, merge, uh, sorry, merge to last. Do the same thing. Merge to last. You know, maybe select just those two. Merge, you know, by distance, make sure that they're, so they were already merged together, so. Now you have the surface and I know this is convoluted and people will have better ways of doing it, but I am a user had 
not had too much time in Blender as opposed to other mesh modeling programs. And I made the switch because it was free and, you know, basically just had to figure out um, there's dissolving the edge. I basically just had to figure out ways that I was going to go and approach uh, this kind of like, you know, CAD related editing stuff. It, I don't necessarily come in and make edits to things that people previously made. So, you know, if I would have done a little bit more practicing uh, initially, you know, I would have been able to to get that this worked out. But I didn't think about falling into this situation here. So if I were to be, you know, drawing this, I would have I would have just been careful in how I was drawing it. And I, I would take I would basically draw. Um, I don't know if you guys want me to show you how I would do it to get even thickness in there or if that's just kind of not necessary but i would do it a different way i guess in in terms of just building something but those tools where you're um where you're taking an edge and you're extruding like say a vertex that comes off the edge and then you're again you know extruding or sorry and i go why as long as they cross one another and they are um, intersecting at any point, you should be able to use some of the tiny CAD tools that are built in to handle those uh, those you know usually this should work. I'm gonna try it again and it just didn't. So it might have something to do with it being on a mesh. Uh, if it were maybe just a simple you know, line drawing that didn't have faces attached to it. I think that would work fine. So that's more or less for like drawing, you know, like a 2D drawing. But at least, you know, in TinyCAD, if you right click and you go here, you can add that vertex at the intersection, which is, there's other ways to do it. You could add a point by just adding an object, snapping it there, but this is quicker. And then you're basically just doing the same thing. You're clicking here, clicking here, hitting M, merging the last, clicking here, clicking here, same thing. Or you could press uh, Shift R and it would do, it would repeat that. And now you have, um, you know, connected geometry. And you would basically go in here, you could select these three, hit F, it'll fill it. <clears throat> you can go to edge mode, click this edge, dissolve it. And then you know you kind of start rebuilding, and you could do the same thing and rebuild it. But I realize that you know, not really knowing how, like what this angle should be to give me exactly this distance, you know, there there must be an easy way, but it's kind of escaping me at the moment. I'm off the cuff trying to do it, and I don't know. But those are the tools to kind of, you know, make some mesh edits. And, uh, you know, really here you'd have to do the same thing. Uh, if you didn't want to model it out, you could click the face, hit X, you know, delete the face, grab this face. If you wanted to, to copy it down to um, this point, you know, remember we have snapping set up the vertex, so it makes it easier. If I, if I click this face and I hit Shift D, you made a duplicate. If you know how long it is, you could right click and just type in the value and get it there. But, you know, I ripped it off here and I hit Z, right? And if I hold control, it'll snap. And now we have, you know, these snapping together. Now, you know that they're not attached. So what you would do is you'd go into vertex mode, you know, maybe bring up Alt Z for the um, X ray, make a selection. Right, hit M and then merge by distance. And now, even if I selected the face, they're connected, and we could uh, continue to just, you know, rebuild this. And in this instance, we would, you know, go to vertex mode, deal with this again. So, this is where I'm going to jump to showing you some machine tools if that's okay. Uh, I won't. I'm going to show you some basics of it. I'm going to load my, if you guys are interested in this afterwards, 
I can make, you know, I can make it about machine tools and using that plugin. And since it's free and it does uh, add a lot of functionality, <clears throat> that's normally pretty hard to find in default Blender. Um, if you're interested in that, I, I will, I'll go more in depth in it and I'll show you how to set it up. But I'm going to load my personal uh, interface now, if that's okay, if you guys want to see that, and I'll show you how some of this would work differently, I guess. But here's a, again, merge to last. Merge to last. And now I hit Alt Z. You know, now that's that's kind of that surface has been managed. Um, I guess what you could do is you could slice. Let's see. With the measure, I haven't used this, but with that measure it add on, if I were to actually remember, I showed the knife tool. If I hit if I'm in vertex mode and I hit K. You bring up a knife and you click it and hit C, it'll constrain it. If you hit Z, it'll uh, basically do an X ray cut where it'll cut all the way through. If I click, it's going to show that this is what's going to um, what's going to be sliced, and then it's going to go into another, you know, make another slice. But we don't really need it, so we're going to just hit uh, Enter and it'll confirm it. And now I think with that measurement measure it tool. I think if you select three points and then you go into angle, it'll give you this angle here. And I think as I see this wouldn't help, I, I'm sure somebody would know how to do that very well. But if I came in and I hit, um, let's go to x-ray mode again, alt Z. If I selected these two edges and then I just started um, moving. But I uh, moved it, let's say, not global, but along the normal. And I find its uh, normal direction. I guess it doesn't really have one, does it? Well, then I guess in this instance, I would I would click these and I would click. Um, maybe these active. Well, so this wouldn't work either. If you if you went into face mode, because this is a face. And I click this face. I believe it's going to let me scale from the normal, but that would be an issue too because this is active. This is a, you know, it might average between these. I don't know. I'm off my game. But, yep. Yeah. Let's see along normal. So Z. I guess so. In this instance, you'd be able to do that, but then you're changing the, the overall thickness of that. So. Anyway, I'm beating a dead horse because I don't know how to resolve this. And I should have probably done some some practice with that. But I want to show you um, something that I think would make things a lot easier uh, when working with Blender. And, you know, it's the plugins that I like to use. And since they're free and it's constantly being developed in I see no reason why not to use them because they do make things a lot easier. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna save this. So file, save as. I'm just gonna throw it, you know, somewhere on my my desktop. And I'm gonna call it um, I don't know. 3DP example. So, you know, one of the other ways we could have dealt with you know, making this is we could have, instead of extruding it off the object, we could have came down here, you know, drew out a box. Um, we could have came through and started uh, drawing, but like setting the angle that we were drawing. And we could, normally what I do is I, I might as well show it. I'm just going to show it before I show the plugin. So if I was building something from, uh, scratch, right? I would hit Shift A. Um, it, if you're using Default Blender, you're not going to get all these extra objects. I believe I showed before how you get them, but normally you could just select the plane and import it in, and 
comes in pretty tiny here because it's coming in at two millimeters. Right? And that's fine. Maybe we'll make it 20. Okay. So let's hide this. So we have this uh, this plane. If I go into edit mode, hit tab, and I say one, and all of these are selected, and I hit M, and I say at center, now we just have a point in the center of the world. So now we're in edit mode. You know, X and Y and Z are denoting their, their positive directions here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start extruding. And I'll hit E. And I'll hit X. And, you know, I'll type in a value. And, and here we're going to just go 10. Right? So what you could do as well is you could go to increment. Uh, you can choose absolute grid snap. And you can know that each one of these so, um, will be a millimeter. So if I just wanted to, like, say, extrude again, hit X. I'm sorry, not X. Uh, so I have it set normal here. So let's just go back to global, draw a global view. So that's going to be troublesome because it's going to be hard to select that vertex. So instead, I'm just going to select these both and just merge them again by distance so I don't have to deal with it. No, I guess it doesn't. So if you move it away and then you click this again and then you go to merge and you say at last it'll it'll get it. But you have to kind of move it away because it doesn't allow you to select doubles. There is a way to clean up doubles and that's it used to be called clean doubles, but it's now called merge by distance. So all right, so these are these are now, um, anyway, this is just a singular vertex here. So if I want to extrude it and start moving and I hit X and I'm set to global transformation, uh, I can just hold control and I can snap. And I moved another, you know, another millimeter that way. But let's do one more thing. So I'm going to draw and I'm going to hit Y. And this time I'm only going to go, you know, f uh, five, I guess would be fine. And hit enter. Now, if I wanted to. Now, see, default blender also, it doesn't really display the stuff very well. And that's something I changed from my, you know, at work because I need to see accurate representations of drawings when I'm making them. So if you go to edit preferences and then you go to. Um, Let's see, it's I guess it's under themes, user interface, and then you're going to be driving through these menus to try to fix this. But there might be another way quickly, which is, you know, I spent some time setting that up myself. But I think under themes, let's see, no viewport. There's somewhere in here that allows you to change the thickness of lines, and I'm trying to. Trying to remember where that is. I think it's under interface here. Yeah, line width. So make it thick and then save that. And let's see if that's better. No. So it, it basically didn't give me what I wanted. These lines became thicker, but not the wire lines. And all that stuff is in preferences. Under themes, you have a ton of menus. And we're looking for 3D viewport. And then I think. Under wire here, you can change the color, but then down here as well. Let's see, outline width, that would relate to the outline around an object. So you can change vertex size. And I don't I don't see the one for the wire so much. Let's just try this outline width. Let's make it three and save it. And that wasn't it. So I had to do a little bit of research to find which one. I mean, once you select it, you can see it, but that's just not good. So I'll show you my interface and how I have it set up for the 3D viewport. But there's a lot of customization I put into that to get it to, to read better for 2D drawing. But this is basically how you go about doing a drawing. Now, say I wanted to get an even thickness here, right? And I wanted to, to cut this corner or something, right? So I guess what I... What I do is I, I click an edge and I shift D and I copy it, right? 
and then I move it, you know, in Y, let's, you could snap it one millimeter, right? Let's just go with that. And then I would click this one and I would shift D and I'd move it in X and I'd snap one millimeter. And then I would basically, you know, I would cut through here and I'd get, that's how I put my chamfers or bevels on there. I don't, you know, maybe if I wanted to draw an edge through here, I would, yeah. you know, you could take this, right, and then maybe shift D, right click, rotate it on Z, I don't know, 45. And I know that that's a 45 degree angle going through there. And I could do the same thing with, um, let's say this one, right? So shift D, right click, rotate. Z, 45, negative. And I guess that's the same kind of issue, isn't it? Where we don't really get the right thickness. I think maybe the other way I would do this, maybe the way I was doing it, was um, I would take this after I get the angle I want, and I would, I would shift D, but I would be able to... Um, oh, I would use... That's what I'd do. I don't even have that open. So there's an add-on, and I believe it's called um, maybe Edge Tools. Dang, do I have this ready? Um, so there, there, there is an. Oh, oh, so you want make a one millimeter rectangle rotate forty-five degrees together? Sure, yeah. You could absolutely do it that way. Um, you guys will probably solve these problems better uh, than I am, you know, and, and everybody can do it differently. So that is certainly a way you can do it. I wanted to <laughs> thank you. It's a slight smile, not even a full one here. So I don't know why. Okay, because I'm searching. Somewhere in here under. Uh, I believe it would be in the, the mesh edit. So I can't remember if it, I'm pretty sure it's a default. Um, here, edit mesh tools. I think this is a, let's try that. So edit mesh tools, there's loop tools. I think in edit mesh tools, you have an offset and by default it's not there. So let's turn this on. So I already did that one. So edit mesh tools is what you'd be looking for. So I'm gonna say save preferences. Okay. And cancel, cancel, cancel. Get me out. All right, so I didn't I don't have a copy of any of these. So anyway, so here's here's this guy, right? So I, I knew I wanted a 45, so I I know it's a simple angle here, but I put a 45 through it and I want to offset this. And I know that let's say between, you know. Let's get our measure tool out and hold control. Uh, and of course, we've got to go to vertex. So I guess it, it actually doesn't do that in uh, edit mode very easily. I'm not, I'm not snapping. It's not easily snapping to that point, which is nice. So my, my, my go back is basically, oh, oh boy, there we go. You know, I go to my, my good old, my good old segment, and I'll just throw that in and see that it's one millimeter, which we knew that, right? Duh. So I'm really failing about here. But okay, so I basically want a one millimeter, well, one millimeter thickness here too. So what what I'll do is, uh, if you go to Edge and you right click and you go to Edge Tools, mm, that's Extend Spline Angle Off Edge. That's not it. So it's not that one. I mean, I have all these uh, added on here, and this is going to take a while. And too bad, Scott. This is the this is the one you were able to record the audio for. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, because I didn't prepare well enough for this. But yeah, there, there's totally there. I don't think this is. It's not curves. It would be under mesh. I thought it was. There's a simple like offset. It might be within that. Um, sorry, where were we? 
This gets confusing and boring here. So it's not modifier tools. That's something useful too, though, that I should have probably showed you guys at some point. So I think so there's mesh tools. Let's just do loop tools because this might be it. And I'm going to say save. And let's check. So right click, loop tools. Now, so to be honest, it might not be default in Blender. It might be something that I had downloaded a um, while ago. But you, <laughs> that's terrible. Oh, geez. There, there might be a way default in Blender, but I don't know where it is because there's so much here. Um, but what it, I think it's just, it's called, um, I'll remember it and then post it for you guys in the Discord just so you know. But if I, you know what? Forget this. We saved this. I'm going to show you. Yeah, let's close it out. Or let's open a new Blender. Let me take my, I'm going to take my custom config. Bear with me, guys. And if you have anything you want to say in the channel, please do. Um, So I'm deleting, I'm deleting, uh, that might be something useful to know. So here we go. So in Blender, um, it installs all of its uh, config settings and, and the like in, um, in app data roaming Blender Foundation. And then once you're, you know, once you find that, you find Blender. And then this folder itself will have uh, a config. And this will be your startup config and user preference config. So those are things that you might want to back up if you've got like a config set up in Blender that you like. So that's one way. Then data files is, I'm oh, sorry, no. Scripts. So in scripts is where your add-ons get installed, right? So we didn't really have any. Um, we didn't have any like, that many add-ons in here. Or actually, it's transferring it in now. But that's where your, your add-on files go. So what I do is I just copy um, copy the folder for the version. And any iteration of 2.92 until they move to a new version will look for that folder. So I make backups of them, and I have my config here. And I just you know drag it in here and replace it. So that, that'll bring all your add-ons over and automatically have them so I save that constantly so that I can move it around to different computers and get these configs going. And then also, I think in uh, data files, no, that would be Studio Lite. So in config, I guess same thing here, like recent files and stuff. This gets saved as to what files you had opened uh, while this was saving uh, these configs. But that's where you would go to find this, app data roaming, Blender Foundation, and then you throw your, your backed up uh, file here. So that's what I'm doing. And this is um, one of the, I, I mentioned this before, this is machine tools. And this is, uh, it's just, it's a lot of different pie menus. And then there's a lot of tools hidden within here that, that rely on hotkeys. And it really made me, you know, from what I was learning in Blender initially, I, I just kept loading, you know, this add-on and then, that changed my behavior in default Blender altogether. But I know a lot of people that do use it, and they will never, you know, go back to default Blender because they rely so much on these tools. And maybe that's like a crutch, right? Because you see how, you know, I ran into a bunch of problems that I didn't know how to solve. And that could just be other reasons too, because I don't know much about, um, I guess, like, you know, mechanical drawing or CAD drawing, and I certainly didn't know math, but let's see. So I, I'm replacing all this stuff. Anyway, so this is going to be some machine tool stuff. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you the way my Blender looks. I could share this with people if they want it. Um, my my theme, like just the theme if you want, or you want everything, I don't, I'll put it somewhere on Google Drive and I can link it. Uh, but if you like this theme, this is my own, you know, my own theme that I go to to work in Blender. It took me a moment to set it up, but 
I think the visibility is much better, especially for if you're doing like um, CAD type drawings. So here's my my default Blender scene. It doesn't bring anything in, and this this is actually something that machine you can have it choose to the machine tools to change um, some of this. So th this is a combination of me using machine tools default stuff, and then also my own customization of a theme. You won't get this theme anywhere else. So um, what I do. Okay, let's get back to doing the same same thing. So I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to go to Mesh, and you can see I have a bunch of Blender add-ons by default set. And I can go through these uh, on some downtime and, and see what all I do add and what I use. But it's hard for me to remember uh, what some of these customizations are. But this is, you know, like extra mesh, to, um, mesh, mesh tools or something in, in Blender preferences, which is the default thing. You can add a single vert, you know, but we're just going to go with, um, with the plane and then zoom out. And then when I go to edit mode, um, and I hit tab because of machine tools, it brings up a pie menu. So instead of hitting tab and it going directly into edit, I do this, and then you can choose your edge vertex face or just straight, just go back to edit mode. So in here, I'm going to go to vertex, right? And this is how mine looks. Um, and if I went into like x ray mode or a wireframe, you know, this is this is the the line thickness I chose, this is the color I chose that I think works well for me. And um, that's the color of the active object instead of it being, you know, orange. So this is how I, what I settled on and what I liked. So I'm going to select all these, right? And then I'm going to hit M and I'm going to, you know, merge them at center just as I did before. And I'm just going to hit E, X, draw this out, 10. Okay, so this isn't going to be. I'll have to set my um, my scale. So I'm not going to work in the normal units I do. I, I use imperial scale, and then I just set it to inches. But I'm going to go to metric. I'm going to set it to millimeters again, 0 0.01. Go here, do the same thing. Okay, so let's uh, grab this again. Hit E. Extrude on X, and they go 10. Oh, and I'm way zoomed in. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Somebody came or left? <laughs> okay, so then, um, so let's try this again. So, what I was doing is I would, I would hit Shift D and I would copy this, and I would move it in Y, and I'd say, you know, snap. Let's say two millimeters this time. We click this, Shift D, I move it on X, and I'd snap two millimeters this way. And I mean, I guess what you what you could do then would be, you know, let's let's take let's just copy this one again. Shift D, uh, Z, rotate forty-five. Oh, I am rotating forty-five, right? Let's see, rotate. Rotate 45, negative, right? And then I could just, you know, move this in place wherever I wanted it. And then if I were to want to move this a millimeter or two millimeters out this time, uh, I guess what I probably would do is I'd probably just snap, uh, snap this through here, or I could have basically just drew another edge. But I'm going to offset it two millimeters this way. So, so if I right click and I go to uh, Edge Tools, there should be. I don't even know where it is in mine, huh? I guess I haven't used this that much. So, let's just say at my work computer I have that, so and I know where to get it. But I haven't been doing any CAD drawings of late, so it didn't matter. But I could have swore, I could have swore I had, I guess, so mesh tools, that's what it's called. And then I have offset edges. All right. And then if you hit F9, well, on my, um, 
or mine it's set up differently but if I go to offset edges you can see here's a width I could set it to negative two and that's the wrong direction right but it went to negative so then I just went two and this is going to be way more powerful um, than I know but I will figure out if this is a default plugin or if this is something this is totally a free plugin that would add a lot of functionality if you would you would be wanting these things um, but that that's how that ended up working and now I was able to get the the two millimeters that way now if you want to extend um, an edge remember we did go over you know clicking this uh, making something active and then choosing your uh, your active element and then just hitting scale and being able to extend you know we were doing that before um, that is one way but I believe in uh, like say machine tools they were able to to add uh, some hotkeys to do that which I think is shift alt one and it automatically moves you into that mode without actually having to set so sorry I have it set here now to active element but if I went back to medium median point which is default if I hit shift alt one it's doing it anyway it doesn't require you to change that transformation in machine tools if I bring up the pie menu you're able to uh, choose these quick settings for you know say active element and it chooses the most common orientations pivot points that a user would want to use but then you still have the option you know to maybe set it back to global or something you know so you can you can go back you can use the defaults by just quickly you know choosing that part of the pie menu or you can go in and after you choose say active you can go here and then set it to global if you didn't want it to be moving uh, along a normal but in this instance if I were to scale it it is moving along a normal and that's fine and that's usually the the, the use case for that active element it's okay to, you know you'd be using um, it against normals or something as opposed to you know like the world axis or something but anyhow it does add a lot of like I said functionality that doesn't require you to to uh, jump jump through so many menus just to click and you know set a few things like you you quickly are able to you know get in there and change things that you need same with snapping so I mean here's your snapping menu right and all of this stuff is here but if I hit you know the hot key for this I can choose a series of um, like presets like a vertex or something and by default vertex it sets it the closest and if I click this, you get that same menu here that you find uh, whoops, here. So it just makes it easier to quickly to move between some uh, presets, but then also change individual things that you would want to change, and then the same menu that you would find up here. So it, I feel it makes it a lot easier. Um, also, something pretty cool is that in machine tools, remember, you know, so before let's extrude this out again let's just have an example if I extruded a vertex and I wanted to merge these together remember um, I'd have to click one it's like another hit M go in this menu and choose first last you know center something like that right these other options um, in machine tools if you click one click the other and just press one it automatically merges so that's the difference. Machine tools is set up differently where the one, two, three hotkeys no longer select vertex, edge, and face. What they do is they select, um, they, they expand a lot on, on the tools of what you'd want to do with a vertex, what you'd want to do with an edge or a face. It makes it a lot, um, it's, it's definitely different. And I remember, I have to you have to learn those those different hotkeys, but I I think it is a more efficient way to to work on. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, very good. Sorry. Okay. 
No, you're correct. All right, so we did this two millimeters. Um, let's do that. So if I go and I go to edge mode, so this is where this is going to be hard to. Well, you know that pressing two on your keyboard would give you the edge, edge mode. But if you hit tab and I choose edge, that's how I'm going to have to do. It. But say I select this edge or I select these series edges, but we only really need these three, right? Um, I'm looking to put the to cut these um, at their intersection. So what I do is I I bring up um, the tiny CAD and I say intersect all selected edges. And it works. And I think this is working because they're just edges. There's no faces attached to them. So I think tiny CAD restricts you to that. So in this instance, then, you know, I would delete, you know, any extraneous. Well, this is the one I'm going to delete. But anything that's extraneous, I would just, you know, hit X and then delete those edges. And I deleted something I shouldn't have because I was supposed to do, um, Basically, just this. I guess. No, I keep doing it. Why am I? Ah, oh, man, I'm so terrible. Anyway, I, I can't even. I can't even. Thanks, Gary, right here at the moment. But yeah, duh. So then you do the same thing between these, and you would go to Tiny CAD. And then you can choose uh, intersect selected vertexes. Too much shoveling, hold on. Oh yeah, please, that's totally why. <laughs> oh God, if you guys truly believe that, um, that'd make me feel a lot better. But no, really, um, it, it has been it's been a it's been a week, and I I wanted to have something very specific to show you guys. I I thought you know it was important to see how you would clean up that model. Um, that you downloaded so you could easily edit it. And I think that is very useful. But to be honest, that happens so easily and quickly in Blender that, I mean, we pretty much deleted all that extraneous geometry like instantly. And then what? Then there was moving with, you know, specific, you know, showing measurements and being able to, to move while watching those measurements and making precise movements by just typing in the measurement. I didn't really think about um, once I started making edits, like how I would have to solve an issue like this. But, you know, yeah, Jovla, right? Anyway, uh, so say, you know, now we got the two millimeters each way. And what I can do here, and, and something that's very useful in machine tools, would be that if I hit Alt X, sorry, I can, I can mirror it. Oh. Relocating and import STL. Okay, good. Yes, thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. That, you know, a little convoluted how that happens. But yeah, dealing with origins and, and doing that, that was useful enough, I think. Sure. So this is a little long winded here, and I'll, I'll probably have to maybe in the next 20 minutes. But so in machine tools, something nice is that they have the symmetrize option. And you can go through and set, oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that those things are very useful. It really didn't fill out enough uh, time. Maybe maybe we could have stopped it at some point there. But you know what? Given another two weeks uh, <clears throat> before being able to, to show you guys something, I'll, I'll definitely come up with something more um, useful. And, and organized in that way but so that you know that's how I would approach I would just again with the drawing you know I just approach extruding restricting certain you know axes typing a certain amount and then that's how I go about it and if I need to make angles um, you know I basically just rotate a line put it in place and and use those uh, tiny CAD tools to to make intersections at all those those edges. So, I mean, I think that that's that's pretty useful. But I mean, you can go through, draw out your shape, right? And then let's close it off. So let's make it, you know, two 
extrude it again and go on X. Now this is cool. This is a machine tools thing that I, I love that I use all the time. Like say I extrude this out and I just move it beyond, right? And yeah, you can hit G, X, and then you can go into your snapping menu and get vertex and say closest and then move and you can hit G, X and then hold control and you can snap to line it up, right? But that was a lot. So with so with machine tools, if you click um, a series of, of verts or edges or other um, elements, you or components of these um, meshes or drawings, whatever you're doing, if you select multiple and you hit um, Alt A, it brings up this menu for uh, alignment. And this, this is pretty. There's a lot to go over here, but what's nice by default is it's set to view. So if I know that this is the point that I want this to be um, aligned with. I just basically select both of them, hit Alt A, and then I just swipe right, right? And same goes for this. If I hit G X and I move this out here and I want this to align to this, I hit Alt A and I just swipe left, right? And now if I had both of these selected in machine tools, if I press one, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm doing the wrong keys here. No, I guess I guess basically what I would be doing is I would just be extruding, you know, and merging these again anyway. I could have swore that um I could have swore that in machine tools that you could I thought you could bridge gaps easily if you just press two of these and press one. I guess that's the merging. So I don't know all the hotkeys for that. But I guess normally if I was approaching a drawing, I just extrude it, you know, and then I, you know, I might not even need to extrude it all the way out. And I just click these and press one and they're, they're merged. So, you know, not remembering really what my, my general, uh, you know, my general, um, workflow would be for any of this stuff because in work what I do is not you know necessarily drawings as much as it's uh, 3d models so this isn't this is something I've done but not often and I've had to figure out a way in blender to kind of do this sort of drawing as opposed to using like um, rhino like if I use rhinoceros 3d That'd be good, right? And my employer would have to pay, I don't know, whatever it's like, six hundred or seven hundred dollars for the program. And um, you know, I'd I'd rather them spend the money on the three D printers and stuff that we've been using. So I just right off the like right off the bat just started using Blender in the work environment, and it served me very well for lots of drawings. But we're not drawing anything, you know, very um, you know, mechanical or like not very technical drawings. But I was able to draw everything that I needed for them in this program. So, but again, like, you know, if I needed to align something, I love how it's based on your view. And I think that that's, that's super useful. And it saved me a lot of time um, being able to just make those selections. Oop, and then press the wrong keys, right? Make those selections and then just easily do that. In you know you can even control shift the bevel. Why is it not do that? Control B? No. Yeah. I could have swore we were doing that. Control shift B was uh, the bevel of a of a vertex, but I guess if I hit control V and I bring up the vertex and I say bevel vertices. No, that's that's correct. Control shift B. I don't know. Shovel in, right? Mm-hmm. That's funny. So I don't know how that ended up being there, but yeah, I guess that's not a thing. Control Shift B. I guess I lost that hotkey combination, uh, and I guess that's that's also the trouble with you know dealing with plugins, especially you know I don't know. Anyway, so Alt V. That, that's something. Why? 
I'm just doing something. I, I don't know what I'm doing. We'll probably have to call it for that reason. Yeah. That's what you get for not being prepared, right? Anyhow. <laughs> yeah. If there's anything um, that you guys do have questions about or what you want to see, and I know you guys have different interests in why you're wanting to use Blender. Um, but, you know, I felt that the, the 3D model, bringing it in, cleaning it up, making, showing how you can make adjustments more easily to a 3D model. I mean, the rest of kind of, I guess, is a um, case-by-case basis as to what you want to do to it. And um, as you experiment with Blender and you find more resources on learning it, you know, you, you'll get the job done for what you need, you know? All right. Great. Hmm. Okay, so this right here, if you were to select it and then extrude, let's take it out of uh, X-ray mode. Well, it looks like we had, when, when I was doing this, I kind of must have made some duplicate vertices because I wasn't thinking about what I was doing here because it looks like we lost. Or maybe the normals are just messed up but okay let's do this again yeah that's a that's a mess that's a real mess oh boy i hadn't really been thinking about this okay so ah uh, goodness give me uh, all right i'm gonna select all these vertices and i'm gonna hit m and i'm gonna say by distance and nothing was removed so what that tells me is when i extrude this and i go to the faces and i select these and when i hit alt n I can recalculate the outside and it, it'll know what the outside of the object should be. Now that didn't really work because this this inside object was supposed to be an inner wall, right? And we were gonna add thickness to uh, the rest of this. The only reason I extruded this now was to show that, you know, you can extrude it without any real thickness to these um, these these walls, I guess, right? So Beforehand, I, I saw that the question was asked, you know, how would you, how would you fill this? And the way you would do this is um, you would select everything, you know, maybe hit M for good measure and merge by distance to make sure you don't have any duplicate verts. Um, and then you would say uh, Alt F would fill it. Um, so in in that you would go to you could you know, Alt. I'm sorry. Blech. You could go to Control F, and if you hit Control F, you bring up the face menu, and then there's Fill and there's Grid Fill, and Grid Fill should be Alt F in default Blender. Uh, if you just do Fill, huh? I wonder why that worked. Because I could have swore that the default Fill uh, would not know what to do in that situation. So let me undo this. And then let's go back to control F and let's do grid fill. Okay, so grid fill might not be the, the correct one. I think grid fill, what that would try to do is um, if you had a, uh, let's see, just for my, my own exploration of things here. Let's take this and this face and say um, only faces. So now we just have, you know, the edges inverts. And let's do something here with these these edges. Let's subdivide them. And let's shift R and repeat that a couple times. So now, you know, we subdivided this a bunch of a bunch of edges and a bunch of verts. And I think if I hit this and I hit control uh, control F and I say grid fill, if it can make sense, it will try to fill it with a grid. And I think that doesn't, that's definitely not going to work here. So uh, in this instance, when you hit, um, when you hit F, or sorry, that, that would be the standard hockey. If you go to um, <coughs> fill, it should just do this. And now you have thickness here. And remember, we learned about the dissolving of stuff. So 
I think if I went to the X menu and I said limited dissolve, it would do its best to dissolve all that excess um, there. And I think, yeah, we don't have any duplicates. So it's basically um, Alt F or F, I think, in default Blender will fill this. And then you could extrude it up and add a thickness. And I hope, you know, now, Scott, <laughs> you asked something specific what was that again because you were you're asking about like making something solid this relate to 3d printing stuff and making sure it's uh airtight right okay so in this instance uh yeah yes it would and and the and one way you would know that is if you went to the ver vertices and I hit A and selected all the vertices and then I hit M and I said by distance and it tells me there's zero vertices being merged. That means that there should be no holes in here. Um, that plug-in mesh machine that I use has something called cleanup. And if I select all these and hit three, it would go through here, through here and clean up all this different stuff. You could have it... Um, show you where there's no manifold um, geometry and stuff which would cause problems with 3d printing so it does um it will automatically help you detect some of this stuff and you can uh, change different settings depending on what, what you're looking for uh, but it's not throwing any um selections or errors here so i know that this is fine but i think um someone in here maybe chili wilson had asked about uh, or he mentioned it right now, uh, the add-on. Yeah, yeah, 3D, um, 3D print. Sorry, look. Uh, maybe it's just print. Yeah, if you just type print, 3D print toolbox comes up. And I have it um, activated already, but it's a default Blender add-on. And if you hit the end menu, um, it should be in here. And yeah, there it is, 3D print. So say for this guy, uh, I'm going to go to solid shade mode, and and this, you know, like I said, all the all the vertices were merged together, um, but you can check here, um, check if it's solid. And you could check all, which is going to find out a bunch of different information about your mesh. But if I just check if it's solid, it's going to basically tell you no manifold edge count zero, right? And I'm not really sure. I don't know, bad contiguous edges or something. I don't, I don't really know. But it throws a zero, so I'm happy, right? I wouldn't know. But I think that this cleanup feature should be able to handle it. To be honest, I didn't have to use this that much. The reason I use uh, pretty much anything I made in 3D so far that's been 3D printed, I just, I just used... Um, you know, like say that machine tools clean up to make sure it wasn't throwing any of these problems because it kind of does a lot of what this does. And then also um, just making sure all my vertices were well. And I never really had a, I never had a problem 3D printing anything that I made in, in Blender after doing those things. But this is here for, for you to use. What I used this before um, to do is to check a volume and I get this volume and then I, you know, we, we work with concrete. so. You know, I was able to take the volume and then find out, you know, how heavy something was going to be if it was made in concrete. Um, so that's where I use this to get the volume. But but yeah, I guess you, you could do that. But then it's all going to come down to your slicer, and yeah, and the slicer is going to tell you all that, like where, um, you know, depending on how much infill you set up many parameter walls and all that garbage right so yeah so i mean th this is basically just useful to make sure that your mesh is you know one of the, the biggest problems people are having you know non-manifold geometry so and that's that would be like you know say you had a like an extra edge sitting over here like a like a if you took a vertex here and i just started you know that was sitting here and i had a um and this is nice too. So with the machine tools, if I want to align, even if I'm in a, um, 
in like a perspective mode like this, it'll still respect that. So, you know, it was that is to me that's way way easier than, and then you could do that with multiple selections of things. So that that made life very easy for me when I had to deal with um, aligning stuff. So I I think it's great, but um, yeah, so that could be you know non manifold geometry there. You might you might not know that that's there. And let's oh well, it actually shows you kind of here with the way it's shading um, with the outlines, and that's just a happy accident there. But if you I think now if we checked all, it's telling me I have one non manifold edge, right? So. And I don't know, zero faces. I'd have to learn a bit about some of this stuff. Non-flat faces, what are we talking about? Not really sure. So, but maybe this is something for me to, to look into further. But I, I hadn't run into any problems 3D printing anything. And uh, it was just all based on the fact that I, I knew I didn't have any duplicate faces. Um, and, and if you did, like, for instance, this face, if I shift D and I right-click that, right? And, you know, you check this, I mean, it probably would give you some more errors here, but like if I were to, you know, take this, go to vertex, select them all, hit M, merge by distance. Um, well, guess what? That's not there anymore. So no big deal. Now, I don't know what, um, what this is about. I have to look, select the data associated with this report. So this might be something useful after all. I don't know what I did to deserve that. Well, that would be my, so let's see what it's showing. I don't know. Oh, now I ran into issues, huh? Let's do this again. Solid. I mean, it gives me that. Intersections. I don't know. Check all. I don't really know what these are now and why they've shown up. But this is going to be giving me nightmares tonight. Whether or not that's... Let's look at this in a way that you can see what's going on. That means your, your vertice isn't connected to that edge. See how you're pulling it down oh, off of that right, main right, edge? Right, right, right. Okay, I see what you're saying. So then also the face. Okay, so that would be an issue, huh? So I guess what we do here is, I mean, this must have, uh, is that is that really going to throw a problem? I think, you know, once you export this as STL, it's going to triangulate it anyway. In so 3D printing, that shouldn't matter at all. No, it shouldn't. I, I thought, so like basically, here, let's go to, Let's do the faces, right? Triangulate faces. Now what happens in Blender? Let's uh vertex. All right, now we got that nice. Let's see what this does. It's still telling me that, huh? Yeah, so on real good yeah, printers, it mm -hmm. would actually try to separate that. It would. Yeah, but mo I mean, you, you'd have to be on a... a like a powder printer, like a laser powder printer or something like that. Oh. That would separate those edges. I see. But most printers like can't even handle that type of separation if they're right on top of each other like that. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Thank you for that. You know, a way I would resolve that, I would just go in and I'd make this box. <laughs> and then it would just fix all that anyway if I needed to. And usually it would be something very sculptural that I'd be making anyway. So that's how I would do it. But... I see what you're saying. So, I mean, I guess if I wanted to go through and clean that up, I'd have to go, you know, grab an edge, you know, subdivide it, grab a vertice, and then this isn't welded anywhere. This one isn't either, huh? Oh, this. Yeah, I think you could guy. also remesh too. Would take care of that. But that doesn't always hold these edges. Right. No, no, that's where you got to be careful with the remesher. I see. Yeah. Well, hey, you know what? That actually 
let's apply it and see what it gives me. Um, oh, so it's because it's doing voxel. So that's, I mean, really with the voxel remesh, that's pretty here. So then let's look at the wireframe of that. Um, that's definitely not applied. <laughs> this should be dense. I guess it's showing me on these uh, these edges how they're, they're going to degrade once it gets voxelized, but um, let's apply it. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice dense. Yep. And then mesh. apply a, a decimate a remesh. Were we talking about? Yeah, that one. What would you remesh? How? And then you can go to uh, smooth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now you but can just you crank up. up yep. tree. But I wonder. So have you used that before? Yes. To clean up. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll actually like if something needs to be remeshed, I'll actually throw it into ZBrush. Yeah, I do that a lot too. I use ZBrush a lot for three D printing. Um, are we just talking about you? You Dynamesh something? Is that what you do in ZBrush? Uh, yeah, I would I would Dynamesh it and then use uh, Z Remesher. Yeah. So, but then the other thing instead of so this, um, I might have went way too high on this. Um. What I would do is I would have just stuck at the voxel and then I would go to uh, decimate and set a decimation, just like you would in ZBrush Decimation Master. Um, oh, here. Very good. Very, very good. My computer likes this. But no, totally. Yeah, the remesh. I, I've used the, the voxel before just to, to get around. So, I think we're still, yeah, we're still voxeled, and that's really dense. But if you go to, um, if you go to uh, decimate, let's just decimate it to half, I guess. Oh, okay, so I, I think I'm going to have to apply it, and I guess you can apply it while you're in. In object mode, but if I apply this, it starts to clean it up, decimate it more. You would have to do it more than that. But I, I just use um, I use ZBrush decimate because, I mean, you could have, I could have done it more, more of a ratio. But I use ZBrush because it does a real good job of decimating. That's still too dense. Let's try, um, let's try decimate, but make it. It might even start to be friendly and show all the. Oh, why is the measure was? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll go over that quick. Um, here we go. So that looks ugly, as all get out, but that should be fine too. Because I mean, ZBrush decimates much nicer than this, but you know, this is the free decimate that we got in Blender. And probably knowing a little bit more about the settings would help with that. But this should be, let's try, um, <laughs> they'll have issues because I never, that, I don't know. Let's not do this. <laughs> Dude, let's look at your problem. Yeah, shoveling. Um, okay, very good. Yeah, so the reason it's doing that is there's a distance in, in view, let's just get rid of these guys. Sorry. I guess I could have just added an edge loop in there, but yeah, I should have. Oh man, I'm terrible. This is not working very well. Anyway, uh, okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna show you what those those measuring tools are doing though. Um, so if I if I select two verts and I make the 
sorry, sorry, segment. And then I went to, um, so I got so much more open here. Configuration, which is an open. And then, uh, where are they? That's kind of weird. It's not displaying my, uh, It's not displaying my settings. Like you usually normally get a, you get an eyeball and a gear to make those adjustments and if he doesn't have it, uh, it can be me. Hmm. Kind of weird. So I guess this is good. Let's try this again. Um, oh, yes. Yes, till next week. You're welcome. I'm. I'll. Uh, I'll come up with something. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's. Uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna sit here and stare at this. But I think. I think we'll resolve that for you another time, or I could re. I'd have to restart. I think. Let's try it. Let's see, because if I, let's just do this one more time. And let me try this, uh, this little extrude. Let's try this extrude um, manifold funny business. Oh. Let's try this. I thought. There was a, I don't know. I am just, it's not, I'm not, I don't even know how this works. That doesn't make any sense. There's something in here that's kind of like a, it automatically dissolves things as you, as you extrude. And I thought that's, a, that's what it was. Extrude manifold, dissolves edges when, I don't, I guess I don't really know the use case here. Because it doesn't look like it's extruding anything. That's really terrible. I guess you have to press E still, huh? I don't know. Never used it. So this is where it should be. There we go. So I guess this is this is more like. Um... No, that's not useful at all, right? I haven't used this tool, but I know that. People found it to be pretty useful because it's automatically dissolving faces that would be left over there. So that's kind of cool. And I, I guess that's how SketchUp works, something, but I not really used it. Okay, so this guy. Let's get the, the measurements on it. So I guess what you can do is you could select them all. You get you can know, hit N, you go to view. And then I have uh can't see what I'm doing. Measure it tool. Go. So now they all came in. And I didn't really, I shouldn't have done that. Because there's many. So delete all, right? So let's just do very specific ones. So segment. And there it shows up. Okay, so this is what you do. You go into the settings for it. Um, what it's showing here is it, by default, with, when it's set to automatic, it takes a measurement from X, Y, and Z. And then also, this would be your uh, your distance from, you know, from those, the edge. But I think it's averaging between, uh, sorry, like X and, X and Z, not Y, right? Let me get in this, uh, this view. So the way you would, yeah, but the way you would, yeah, this would change how far away it is, but then you can also go here and you can you can set turn off automatic, and um, and then you have X Y Z here, and you can set okay, well I'm the X dimension, I want it to draw the, the measurement from it, right? So that way, and then you can set negative one and inset 
you know, change which way it's drawing. Or you can uh, have it go in both. So then if I want it to go in Z as well, you get back to how they set it by default or something close to it. Um, the reason I think that they do this automatic is so that it's pretty janky, but I usually go through and set up my own custom uh, like offs offsets and how I want the dimensions to read. But I think what it's doing is so that you can see it from multiple views. And it's not very nice looking. And and I think, you know, they stopped developing uh, this add-on. It's nice that they put it in here at all. And, and most people didn't really need to use it unless they were, you know, doing something that required to, to render uh, these measurements. But you can go in under the, the render option for, um, Sorry for the, where is it? Oh yeah, measure it tool, I'm not even, here it is, render. And you can come here and you can tell it to render and then it'll render all your dimensions out, which is nice. And then I just overlay them on top of whatever render I made in this program for, for that. But yeah, what you asked was, was basically just that one setting. Um, and this is weird. It like in my, I think it might have something to do with this. I was trying this, uh, this add on here and this is supposed to manage your, your end panel and organize it more, but maybe it has bugs because, um, it's sorting my settings for the dimensions above the measure it tool. Right, like you would find it normally under measure it and you scroll down and see it. But for some reason it's throwing all this right at the top. So that's kind of weird, but I have to look, look into resolving that. Anyway, but yeah, it's this one. Um, it's this, this dimension right here. And I, I don't think, I guess that's just the distance. That's way too much to say. One. What does it say? Yeah, it just says distance. And then font positions as well. But you, I mean, you could read all what these do when you when you hover over them. But I I have a preset that I just override, and then when I have to deal with uh, what orientation I need this, I turn off automatic, right? And then I. I zero out the ones I don't want and then set it to this. Now there is a problem, like say, so you took these two and you said segment, um, where is that? It's way down where it shouldn't be. Um, and I said segment and I roll this out and let's make this longer, right? It's telling me that it's whatever, 1.13 meters, right? Um, but say I just wanted, I mean, I could get that measure from somewhere else, like here, and get the, the distance. Say I wanted to find out um, between here what this measurement in Z is, and only that, not getting the 1.13, you would, on its diagonal, you would. Um, you would go in here to automatic, and then these down here, X, Y, and Z, we know that we only want the Z. So turn these off. And now it's giving me, um, you know, this vertical dimension just in Z. And then if it tells you it's only giving you uh, the measurement between these two points in Z. You know, it's not giving you, um, the true length of that that edge on that diagonal because that that might be what you need instead of that you know but that's how you would set that and you could turn the warning off right here and then for this say i want it in x but i want it um negative so i press negative and then i come here and i set the distance now you can you could do it differently you could press one 
and then you could make this a positive value, right? And if you don't like this diagonal here, you would go to the, you would choose, um, you would choose this uh, orthogonal set, and then it would, whatever was A or B, maybe your first click and your second click, it will choose where to, you know, to, to set a distance from it. So like if we were doing B, I think it's setting it, um, what, 2.2, whatever that value is, out from here. But if I set it to A, it's, at, it's adding the 2.2 to here. So it's, it's a little, I don't know. I mean, once you've used it, I can get through here and add dimensions pretty quickly and just kind of jump through and, and tick all the boxes I need. It's not that bad. But initially, just getting going with it and, and learning how that worked um, was kind of not terribly fun. Yeah, I want to check something out here and see if I do the, the shift alt one and slide. Okay, so it's sliding from that active point. And that's definitely not what we want. I wonder if that works for the for the edge. Yeah, it definitely doesn't. So that's where um you would did I ever figure that out? No. Let's let's end it because I don't know what I'm doing now. See, my way around some of this stuff is like, you know, I might even just uh, like split this off, and I would take these verts and I'd just slide them up individually, the distance I needed, and then I'd rebuild stuff because, I mean, there's a lot of tools in here, and there are better ways at times to do things and. This, I guess, comes with experience, but I had about two years, no, year and a half to two years in Blender, and it's done everything I needed it to do, but a lot of my uh, my previous modeling was 3D Studio Max and, and Maya, so, but I do, I don't know, I do have a preference for Blender over everything else now because I, I see the problem in Blender and I see the potential that's there and I know it's there's just so much to learn. So I always I just always watch what other people are doing. And I'm still learning myself so but yeah that's how you would take care of that itch that situation. But I heard, you know, you know, ZBrush being dropped and uh I use ZBrush for a 10 years now I think more um, and that is actually that was my go-to 3D software for the most part just because I was doing a lot of just organic sculpture and things and you can even do a bit of hard surface modeling in there too with the Z, Z um, modeler tool that's in it and it it almost functions in a way maybe like what I've seen SketchUp do but I haven't used SketchUp um, but Blender also has a lot of sculpting tools in here, and, I, and I'm wanting to get into exploring a lot of this because they're they're doing some incredible things that I haven't seen ZBrush do yet either. So it's just a whole nother very intense thing to have to learn. Um, but but yes. So in sculpt mode, I think if you press Control R, you automatically voxel, voxelize something. So if you wanted to, instead of going to the apps, you could go into sculpting, hit Control R, and I think if you hit Shift R, you can scroll out a grid to get a better representation of um, how much resolution you're adding. And then if I hit Control R, it's going to take a second, but it just remeshed it. I hit Alt B and I get a good wireframe on there. And it kind of killed those edges, but you know, depending on the scale of this thing, if you're 3D printing and stuff, I it'd be fine. I wouldn't do it to this object because we didn't have any problems. <laughs> simple. But it's nice to know that if you jump into sculpt mode, 
um, you can simply just add the the remesh to it by Control R. And I like the Shift R. Like I like this representation of the grid because you can get real. Well, let's try it again. Shift R. I'm going in such a. I don't know how to. It's like not letting me scroll. <laughs> yeah. I'm done for the night. Look at this. Shame. I know that that ends up over here. Um, under remesh, you can just set it. So let's just do one. Now I can. Yeah, uh, I don't know. There's just things, I guess. I think I'm. I'm checked out. It was fun. I think you did good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. There's just a. There's so much. And and I'm gonna fall into a lot of traps if I don't have a plan. Um, I did up to a certain extent, but we went into a lot of other stuff. Um, but really, I I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you, do you think you know using add-ons or using default Blender would be your your interest? Because um, I felt that in a lot of cases it had helped me to use add-ons, but then I know that going back to default blender is kind of a rough job in certain ways. So it's kind of good to know both, right? Oh boy. Yeah, that's true, tiny CAD, and that's default in here. Um, what, do you, what do you guys see this? Check this out, this is so cool. And then I gotta get going, but all right. So watch this. Bring cube in. There's this uh, add-on called box cutter. Here, let's make the this better to see. Um, actually, so it's showing. I'm doing this. Hit studio. High quality. Check this out. Now, what's really cool about this then, so I'm doing like a, you could change the settings on the fly. What's cool about this is that this is, now if I, um, it's Booleans, right? It's, it's handling all your Boolean stuff, which is unbelievable. So, and, and then all these can be, you know, deleted and taken care of. Um, and then also, like, say, start adding a bevel in. Now, at some point, this will degrade because dealing with bevels and then while doing booleans can get kind of funny if you overshoot your, like, this edge. Like, it wasn't thick enough for the, the, the amount of boolean I was adding to it. But what's cool about this, then, is that, let's say I cut. I gotta go back to box cutter. Then cut in this geometry, turn this uh this wedge off. Let's just keep cutting. Let's make something. If you hit tab, you can um sorry, pressing the wrong things. If you hit tab, you can change this. You could add a bevel. This is um, and all your uh, I'm sorry, all your uh, <laughs> I'm not very good with this. This is something newer that I started to check out, but it's I don't know, it's amazing. If you saw, if you saw a user that knew, you know everything about it, you'd be blown away by it. But here's something cool. So like you can change the mode of which you, is your drawing in, like what it's doing, right? So like that was a slice. And then also check this out. This is um this would be like like an inset. I think this is the inset one. That is an inset, and then I think if you go to here, 
I think I click this and I should be able to, you should be able to change the amount that it insets there. I might have missed how you do that. But like I said, it's something I wanted to learn um, more about. And the other thing that's cool about this is if you go into, they have all these different menus that pop up, you can, um, you can change the mode type to, um, I'll just do it through this menu, like N-Gone or something. I thought, I don't know. It's just so much. There's a lot to learn on this, but let's try it again. So D, D. Yeah, so here, custom end gone. So then you can you can come in and start drawing like a shape, right? And then this is not what you'd want to do, but that you can extrude that. And this is ah, uh, that was not correct. This is why. So I wanted to draw the end gone, but I need to have the object selected. Or something right? and then if I hit enter it'll slice right through it with that that odd you know cut this is a boolean so I could come back to um, it at any time and, and get it from where it puts it in your it organizes all this into a collection which is cool but say you did all this right and you're thinking you wanted to uh, apply it they have this setting, Smart Apply. And then when I go to Edit Mode, it automatically applied all those Booleans, and it did a cleanup for you, too, the best it can, because some of these edges just have to be, um, like, I can't dissolve this one. It has to be connected. It's just what it is. It needs two edges out for that, I guess, um, the hollow it's putting in there. But, like, this would, this is totally probably a, a 3D printable, Let's bring it up. Non-flat faces. I don't think any of these are going to, and overhangs. I don't, I guess it's relating to, um, you know, 3D printing overhangs and things like that. That's kind of cool that it tells you. And then I guess you're setting your overhang angle. I never thought about that being in there. That's neat. I just I just printed a Buddha head recently and and is it was this James is he still here is that who joined us that knew all that about um, remeshing and stuff is that you James no that's no. Uh, me actually I was wondering if I can introduce myself oh yeah please do all right uh, I'm my name's Adam I'm moving back up to the valley at the end of the month uh, I was pretty heavy in the Orlando Florida maker scene down there um yes how's it going how's it going um yeah so i yeah i'm not sure why i'm moving but i'm actually in north carolina right now uh moved up to north carolina for the past uh two years my partner was working over at uh, epic games uh he's he left epic games and and now i'm going back up north be with uh friends and family again uh by day i'm a uh commercial director and photographer um but i'm also a media generalist especially now with uh COVID happening I, I went back to my roots for freelance so i do uh 3d animation special effects uh modeling pretty much anything that you know people throw at me on by night though i'm a uh, a maker i do a lot of uh arduino interactive art projects um i'll actually integrate unity and game engine stuff into um maker stuff like raspberry pis arduinos controlling uh, uh udp controls uh esp 8266 controls full stack engineering um so yeah that's what i do i've been using uh 3d for since 2003 with 3d studio max maya and then i uh moved into blender about five years ago uh, i also drop in on uh youtube every now and then i do tutorials and twitch streams for you know 3d and animation that's cool yay so that's 
you got quite a lot of experience in Blender. What do you what do you generally make? I guess in Blender, like what's do you do character stuff or hard surface uh, modeling or I'm all over the place. I'll do organic yeah. and hard surface. Uh, yeah. Like right now, I'm actually uh, doing uh, Buds Pro Live for the new Samsung commercial. So I'm animating the the stuff from Hong Kong or from South Korea is you know they they make it and they give it to us and then they don't give us like alpha channels and then uh samsung america is like oh we want different backgrounds so i literally have to like animate and re-render a lot of crap that comes from the, those guys uh, Wait. so adam uh yeah i may know you I think... are you ryan yeah totally from ah, L -Tri -C. Yes. yes. Yeah, no you, shit. I was wondering yeah, what happened to you. I thought that was yeah. you, and I didn't want to say. I'm like, yeah. man, are you Ryan? And you'd be like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, you're, you're How correct. you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Good. Yeah, this I I am uh I'm new into getting into the Blender stuff, but no, I remember you had a lot of experience with 3D. And I mean at a similar time we had gotten into to it, but I got into it in high school and stuff and I jumped around in different programs, but I, I went mainly into ZBrush for a long time because of the job I was.